All right, Ron, thank you. Well, a lot drier, but also a lot colder here yeah. in Fort Collins, Colorado. As this is going to be the second possession coming up for the Cowboys of Wyoming taking on the Rams of Colorado State. It is 32 degrees of kickoff, and the field just started to get a little bit slick. It's freezing over now as the Cowboys have it first and 10. Outside of their own 26, call up the 27-yard line. Christofferson, their all-time leading rusher, is the single set. And a huge hole for Ryan Christofferson for a first down. Take a look now at the Russell Athletic starting lineups. And we begin with the Wyoming offense. Ryan Christofferson, their outstanding running back, the all-time leading rusher in Wyoming history, already over 1,000 yards this year. Marcus Harris, he is their true home run threat, the sophomore from Minneapolis. 50 catches already this year. Steve Cyphers, the right tackle, leads it up front. He's the wax freshman of the year last season. The first time an offensive lineman has ever been honored like that. We just saw the first first down of the game on the second possession for Wyoming. Christofferson running into his own tackle. Still makes positive yards across the 45 to the 47 as he ran into Steve Cyphers. Eight yards in the game. And now the defensive unit for Colorado State. Steve Hodge, their heart and soul up front. Two-time all-whack performer. The linebacking crew, well, the coaches told us yesterday, Garrett Sand, he runs like a tailback. He's got that kind of speed, but he hits like a linebacker. And Pettis Davis is getting the start in the secondary. Steve Lynch couldn't practice all week long, so a rare start for the young man from Waukegan, Illinois. Second and short, second a little more than two. This time, the first down across the midfield stride, taking to that time, Terry Hendricks, the senior from Arlington, Texas. Sean Moran in on the stop. And let's check in real quickly with Mike Tarigo. Mike? Okay, Joel, halfway through the scheduled 12-round fight, Michael Moore, the three-and-a-half-to-one favorite, has won all six of the first 12 rounds on our unofficial scorecard by a 10-9 count. George's left eye getting a little banged up now. We'll keep an eye on the heavyweight title fight as we go back to Joel. All right. Well, George is just pacing himself. 10-15 counting left of the first quarter. Second first down of the drive for Wyoming. It's Christofferson. Good surge, but the offensive line, he showed some patience as well to take it down to the 43 for a gain of about five. That is a key, despite the fact with the weather conditions and the ground surface, that offensive line has had a real good lean. They are pounding people off the ball right now and opening yeah. up real good seams. As Joe Tiller told us yesterday, the coach of the Cowboys, Ryan Christofferson, is big, really nicked up all year long. You get a good idea, he told us, over the first couple of series, whether or not he is going to have a good game. You can usually tell by the second series. Separated shoulder, torn rib, cartilage, sprained wrist. Well, in second and almost six outside of the 43. Christofferson with a huge hole inside the 35 to the 34 for another Wyoming first down on the drive that started back in the road 27. Davis Stanifer. Had to make the stop at the secondary. Five carries already, 38 yards for Christofferson. Yeah, you just can't say enough about this offensive line. There you get to pull by glasses. Watch 74 at the top. You see Bartlett, he, he kind of seems it. These guys are running around with nobody to hit. I mean, these are gaping holes, uncharacteristic for the Rams defense. There's got to be revenge on the mind of the Cowboys last year in the series season finale. They were at home facing Colorado State, and they were hammered 41 to 21. If they won that game, they went the Hollywood Bowl with an outright whack title. Hendricks again breaking tackles. Good yardage on first down all the way to the 28. So you get six on first down. Strode again had to make that hit in the secondary along with Kenya Ragsdale. Well, Ragsdale had a chance to make a clean tackle and he missed. It was one of the things that really hurt him against Utah. They were in pretty good position. They couldn't lock up. Fourth year at Wyoming for Joe Tiller last year. They finished at eight and four, went to the Copper Bowl. They lost that uh, Copper Bowl game, though, to Kansas State. Sonny Lubick, what a success story at Colorado State in his second year. Former offensive coordinator here, former defensive coordinator at Miami. And they are 7-1 so far this season. As they run Hendricks in motion on second and short. Marcus Harris with a good grab of the ball, a little bit behind him, down to the 21 for another Wyoming first down, pulling it off in front of the corner, Ray Jackson. The quarterback, Gustin, appears to be on, and as Joe Tiller told us yesterday, it's got to be a quick rhythm offense for him, three-step drop. So important for him. They want to give him one read. He sits back, he launches, gets the ball out, has a great arm. This time throws a little bit in back of, of Harris. He makes the grab and holds on. 
We remind you, New Mexico beat Utah today. A huge upset in Albuquerque, so it is now the Wild Wild West. Not only the Wild Wild West, because this is a three-way tie for the top spot in the Western Athletic Conference. First and ten outside of the 21. Another huge hole over to the left side for Christofferson. He takes it all the way down to the 13 for a gain of eight. Sand and Ingram combining with the stop, and we're going to head back quickly to Mike Tirico. 20 years and a week ago, George Foreman lost the heavyweight title to Muhammad Ali. Trying to regain it tonight against Michael Moore. He may need a knockdown to do so. On our unofficial scorecard, Moore has won the first seven rounds, 10-9, after the fight. At halftime of this game, host fight coverage with Charlie Steiner, Al Bernstein, and Mark Schwartz at the MGM in Vegas. Back to Joe. All right, Mike. Alongside Rick Walker, you could appreciate the play of this offensive line right now for Wyoming. Christofferson bouncing outside. And he's got a first down. It'll be first and goal just inside the 10. The offensive line doing quite a job of this drive that started back at the 27. That time Cyprus was just beautiful on all these guys. Court the first clinic. They're getting real good helmet placement. Good fit. You got a jersey on jersey. They've been able to get some movement. Seven carries, 49 yards already. For Christofferson, six foot, 240 pound senior from Glendale, Arizona. Shane Glosser, redshirt freshman, the right guard, leading the way. Go to someone who's successful, like Christopherson. He stopped that time on first and goal, though. Maybe a half yard at the most. Kenya Ragsdale wrapping him up, the senior from Akron, Ohio. Ragsdale, one of the great stories for Colorado State, had to go to summer school to maintain his academic eligibility. He had to take three classes, and he needed an A and two Bs if he was going to play for the Rams this year. Not only did he get a couple of A's and a B, but he's on schedule to graduate in May with a degree in sociology. Super story. That's what it's all about. He missed some time. He's really pretty much slow trying to get back into the flow. It hurt his conditioning against Utah. So you're looking to see him go here and play at least 80% of the game. Moved it most of the way on the ground with Christofferson and Hendricks. And Gustin in trouble, breaks the tackle. Breaking tackles all the way inside the five. It'll be third and goal as his knee went down just inside the two. And his coach Joe Tiller told us, if he has to run, we're in trouble. But didn't look too bad on that yeah, one. Yeah, but you know he went down on him. This young man, obviously he's not a mobile quarterback, but he's got good, good feel for it. Now, he's done this now on a couple occasions, especially in San Diego State. A little sucker play. See, an average guy can go down right. This guy is, you know, he's a big guy. 6'6", 230 pounds. He makes the guy miss. That's Ragsdale. So as we look at other scores from around the nation today, it is now third and goal, and this is the 12th play of this drive coming up. Christopherson in the single set. It'll be Ryan Christopherson. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown, Wyoming. The ninth touchdown of the season for Ryan Christopherson and Wyoming with the early lead. Well, that's milkshake stuff there. Joe, that's what you give the offensive line. You say, hey, guys, meet me at the student union. Watch that offensive line. That serves. They come up. You got a good double team blocks, a good tag. You got Bartlett and Corp just coming off, moving people. Good operation. Laurie Weedle in for the extra point drive. A redshirt freshman from Kansas City Parkfield High School on target. And the Cowboys score on a 75 yard drive. But Mike, you know, George got down to 250. Rick, you know I'm a fight fan. Oh, yeah, I think I once he got away from those burgers, that steady diet of burgers leading up to the fight, I thought he was going to have problems. Never break your training <laughs> regimen. You know what I mean? If it's six burgers a day, you stick to six burgers a day. Cowboy, 73 yard, 12 play drive. Say, so await the kickoff now. Chris Myers, sweaty back deep. Over on the far side, though, it's going to be taken by Peace. Up the left side, he's got it past the 20, and Jeff, that fan wore the fullback's got it with a nice return out to the 25-yard line. We'll be right back once again to Hughes Stadium in Fort Collins. Back in Fort Collins, let's join the third member of our team now, Mike Mayock. Mike? Thank you, Joel. Very interesting story. Starting free safety, Greg Myers was also became the kickoff man today. On the opening kickoff, I saw him grab his leg right after the kickoff. He hasn't played since. He told me his quad popped. He can't get it loose. They're going to work on it for about 20 minutes, and they'll try and come back later. That 
news early for Sonny Lubeck. And the Rams of Colorado State, they've had problems with their special teams over the last few weeks. They've got a first and 10 now at their own 25, trailing by seven. And a good carry across the 30 from Renard Karn, the junior from Oxnard, California. And it continues to be a good night for Michael Moore on our ESPN unofficial scorecard. He's taken each round by the count of 10 to 9. And they're through 9 now. Well, the injury to E.J. Watson, the leading rusher this year for Colorado State, has opened things up for Van Ward tonight and Renard Karn. Neither has had all that many carries this year. Ward, who's in there now, has only had close to 30, and he gets it on the counter. Looked like he was going to get the first down, but he tried to circle back. He may be short by about a foot or two. Joe Cummings getting to him the left end, who's getting the start for Brent Schieffer. It was a slow developing play, and it was good recognition by the Cowboys because they closed the cushion real quick. Joe Cummings, fortunate to get the start, very active player, and they like him a lot. So now third and less than a yard. For Colorado State with 448 in counting. Left for the first 15 minutes of play. It's Ward, he gets the first down, but he took a shot. They get him up high, and it was Ty Hopkins, the left tackle, the first one over there, the senior from Longmont, Colorado. Ty was there, Tyrone Williams was there as well, 87. That's really the strength, Joe, is down line. Everything happens right up line of scrimmage. Who can capture it first? In a short yardage situation, you've got to fly off the football. If you don't, you can forget it. That was pretty concerning, a great effort by the running back. A rare start for Joe Cummings due to the injury to Brent Schieffer. He is out with a sprained left knee. He's also had a bad back most of the season, so a second-team all-whack performer last year, not available for the Cowboys. That was the first first down of the contest for Colorado State. And Hill is looking to throw. This is what he does best. Slides down short of the first down, near the 45. He's going to be short by a little more than a yard. Well, as you mentioned earlier today, New Mexico shocked everybody in the Western Athletic Conference with a win at home over Utah. So now a three-way tie with the top spot between Utah, Colorado State, and BYU. Well, you called it the wild whack, and now it's really a wild race for the Holiday Bowl. The winner goes to the Holiday Bowl. Last year was BYU there, so there's a tie. BYU the most recent to go there. They would not be the choice as Warren gets the first down, I believe. Yes, he got the spot across the 46. Again, Joe Cummings in on the hit. That's an outstanding job by Cummings. I mean, the guy does it fundamentally. I mean, he's sound. Doesn't let you get that outside shoulder. You can't hook him. He drives you uphill. Let's go back. He's now to Mike Tirico. Mike? Joel, a shocker. George Foreman, who really hadn't shown much the last couple of rounds, through a massive right after hitting a couple of big punches, knocked Michael Moore down and out. George Foreman has become the oldest heavyweight champ in the history of the sport. It was Jersey Joe Walcott, who was 37 years old in five months when he won the title in 1951. Now at age 45, George Foreman has won the IBF and WBA heavyweight title, knocking out Michael Moore in the 10th round. We'll take you there. Stay with us. Back to Joel. All right, Mike. We love it in Fort oh, Collins. That's outstanding. Lovable George yes. Foreman. Easy I, to like. I thought it would happen in the first three rounds, but never later on in the fight. And maybe the hamburgers did help. <laughs> While we were away, Anthony Hill took it on first down, looking to throw, and ran it for seven yards. He's yet to find his wide receivers. Yeah, but he went to him early on. That opening play, that bomb to Olsen, they didn't hook up, but he scares the defense. But now second and three outside of the 46 of Wyoming. Is it the reverse? Yes, Burkett's got it. He's got blockers. Burkett down the sideline. Will he take it the distance? Stopped inside the five, close to the one. Leave on the free safety, caught up with him. What a razzle-dazzle play. Well, they were only kind of gapping. It was all set up because of the counter trade. They weren't really successful with it early on, but this was the dividend. It paid off big. And if you watch it here, they're going to see, you see guards pull it this way, and that gets the defense in a, in a fast flow. It pulls them over, and you get them out of position. There you see it. And then you come back, and the linebacker is like, where are you at? And you look at the convoy up front. The linebacker got to keep going. You coach him to keep running. And then you've got a guy who's real athletic and has a nose for the end zone, and you're going to get real close. So it is first and goal now. 
just outside of the two. Two tight ends, a wing back, and Ward. Forced him wide, and he does a good job to get back to the original line of scrimmage, where it will be second and goal from there. Talents, the middle linebacker over there, and will leave on the free safety. Very good job by Ward running right up against the stack and was still able to, to pick up a few. So far this year in the red zone, they produced points 32 of 38 times. Great number, 24 touchdowns. A very high percentage. That's good, but in their memory, all they're thinking about is the last time they were there against Utah and they threw it in the touchdown. Inside of 90 seconds left of the first quarter. This time, Carr in the single set in the backfield. The one. So Brent Lou, the left tackle, helping Mark Brook, the outside linebacker, is really stiffening up inside that three-yard line. Boy, Mark Brook is a guy who has been hurt for the most part for require offseason surgery for his shoulder in the offseason. The coach has said he had his best week of practice. He let him out, you know, let him get a week of rest. And it's a homecoming for him, so you know he wants us to go. Drive started back, Colorado State 24. This is the 10th play coming up. Ward back in the lineup now. It is Ward. He is in. Touchdown, Colorado State. says a lot for you when you can answer a 12-play drive by the opponent, come right back, smash mouth football, and get it back in the end zone. Good surge by the offensive line, and the back that goes airborne. Pretty hard to stop it when you're in the air. So the junior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, gets in, and now Matt McDougal, first game as the regular place kicker, has it low. Does he get it over? Yes, just barely. <laughs> 76-yard drive as Van Orr travels the final yard, and we're even in Fort Collins at seven. They are bundled up in Fort Collins. In time temperature right at freezing, 32 degrees now. They have had problems all season long. Seven block kicks this year for Colorado State. This one was ugly, but it was over to tie things up at seven. But now for McDougal, kicks the extra point. Look who's out there getting ready for the kickoff. Their place kicker all year long, David Napier. Well, Napier's back. The Could senior be. from Escondido, California. Still could be the best thing for him. Really was. He was, you know, lost in the bracket. You get a chance to come back and help your team win. The sophomore from Colorado Springs, Richard Peace with it from the eight. And Peace with a nice return across the 25. Solid field position out to the 27. Return of just about 20 yards before Garrett Sand got there. 76-yard drive, 10 plays, 525 off the clock. And as you can see, they did not have to throw the ball. No, the reverse was key on that. The offensive line, I thought, you know, Carney Ward did a real good job running the football hard. Picked up one uh, key third down. They were able to keep momentum. So now the second consecutive time. As there is McDougal who had the problems on the extra point. So Napier kicked it away. Christopher's in. Not much available up the middle. A yard, maybe two at the most. And that should be the final play of the first quarter as Wyoming with the ball now for the third time in the contest. They have taken five of the last seven in this rivalry that started back in 1899, the oldest rivalry, in fact, the Rams of Colorado State. So that is the end of the first quarter as it is tied at seven, and both teams on their touchdown drives getting it done on the ground. Let's head back to the studio now and join Mike Tarico. Mike. As they said a long time ago, what is Sistron? What did they say out of the University of Mars? Mars, yeah, the yeah. Raiders. He'd be proud of that. That feels good. That feels good. It looks like it. Start of the second quarter, Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock in Fort Collins, Colorado. Dustin out of the shotgun for the first time, and surprise, surprise. 
quarterback draw all the way to the 35 after his coach told us yesterday the last thing we want to see is our quarterback run the ball. Let's He's look at this up. Numbers at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. Almost identical, Rick. Oh, they really are. And the rushing yards are really important for both squads because it helps the quarterbacks. And as you can see, pretty much mirrored first downs a little more for Wyoming. But the bottom line, we're tied at seven apiece. And it's so important for Gustin to get off to a good start. He had a super first quarter against San Diego State. And coaches feel like if he gets his momentum going, he can be deadly. Over the last two games, he's had the fourth and fifth, fifth best passing days in Wyoming history. Huge hole for Ryan Christofferson. He loses it on his way down. He was already down. He's got the first down out to the 38-yard line. Hit there by Steve Santafer in the secondary. Tough thing about when you blitz. You make yourself susceptible through the big run. How often do we see it? So you get a crease right there, wide open. I mean, that's a jailbreak. And then you got the rhino rumbling upfield. Kind of like to see him go more north-south to a guy with that kind of body. He leans forward. He'd be a lot more successful. Well, Sonny Lubick's got to be concerned with the way they are running the ball. And I think any coach would be concerned after a bye and a yeah. devastating loss like his club suffered. Hurts your timing. It really hurts your timing. Dustin again out of the shotgun. And he put a rope in there wow. for a first down, taking it in Brent Tillman, the junior from Pueblo, Colorado, with good coverage in on the play as well. There are very few guys that can make that pass. I mean, that's a rocket. They are so proud of this young guy because he's been able to bounce back over adversity. You see three receivers side. They run a slant. You got one in the alley. And he kind of sits down. That's a read route. They're going to run a lot of those. They want to get him right there where he can settle down. And Tillman is very good at it. Real smart receiver. Knows how to find the soft spot. Last one, as you can see, the last two games, 400 to one, fourth best in Wyoming history, 397, fifth best. The blitz, they pick it up, not quite though, and they get the gusted. A loss of five, and let's go downstairs once again to Mike Mayock. Mike. Hey, Joel, before the game, I had a chance to talk with Sonny Lubick about the big Utah loss today. I said, does it make any difference to your players? He said, listen, Mike, Huge rivalry number one. We're playing on ESPN number two, and now our kids know we got a legitimate shot at the WAC championship. He said, if these kids aren't up for tonight, they will never be up for a football game. Joel? Well, in 102 years of Colorado State football, they haven't had many big games, and now they've been on national TV two games in a row. That's what it's all about. This is what you wait for as a college student athlete. You want the bright lights. Second and 15. Gustin finds his man for the short gain is taken in again by Tillman. And they hit by Kareem Ingram, the senior from Cleveland, a third-year starter. Oh, he's just been Mr. Consistent for him. And once again, Justin sitting back like his drop. He's there, and he's patient now. He's taking the underneath stuff. Give the secondary some pretty good credit. Greg Myers is not playing, but yet they've been able to keep everything underneath. Now, when Ingram was recruited out of St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland four years ago, make it five now, he wanted to be a linebacker. He was the, on the number one team in the nation in high school. Well, it's still real good. I mean, here. Everybody wanted him to be a free safety, though. Gustin on third and long. Great pump fake. Will it buy him a first down? Yes. He got it up as Ragsdale knocked him out. What a pump fake to elude that man. Ingram had a 13-yard gain. Outstanding effort. It really is. I mean, what John has had to do, he's got a slow start. A couple years missionary work. Got in, broke a collarbone as a sophomore. Just lacks experience. Really hasn't had a lot of rep. But see, this is just pure athletic. This is a read here. He understands. I mean, you're faking that guy out, and you're already over the line of scrimmage. That's just good football sense. Well, his coach told us yesterday, he's so much more relaxed now. He came in off the bench two games middle of the season. And he said the reliever role did a world of good for someone who was putting far too much pressure on himself. Yeah, he wanted it almost too bad. It is tied at seven. It's under 12 minutes of play. First and ten. The man is there, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ray Jackson. He's out of bounds at the 22. What a grab. Marcus Harris was the intended target. That's fantastic. Ray Jackson, Mr. Big Play. You know, he's got a 100-yard return in his repertoire against UTEP, which is tied a whack record. I mean, this is just a great run. 
John Gustin talking to his offensive coordinator after the interception, the fifth pick of the year for Ray Jackson. He had five last year, so ten over the last two seasons for the cornerback for Colorado State. They've got a first and ten of their own 22, tied at seven. And a huge hole for Van War over the right side. He's close to a first down. But let's look back, Rick, at that interception right before the break. And here we watch Jackson once again. He's kind of beating the quarterback. He was in like in the zone, and he just goes in and takes it away. Now, if that ball has some elevation on it, we could be singing a different song, but it doesn't. He makes the grab and gives the Rams a shot at the football. What an exceptional read, though, in that zone package. He picks up peace first and then drops back. you got to be good to do that. But he's short of the first down by a couple of feet. They've got it now with the run by Van Ward. It'll be first and 10 at the 33. Wyoming coming into the contest with a 4-5 and five mark. They look like it was going to be a promising season for the Cowboys, but they come into the contest with three consecutive losses after their 8-4 season last year. Turnovers have really killed this team like we just saw there. They gave it away six times in the loss at Oregon State. In fact, it cost quarterback John Gustin his job earlier this year. Yeah, they just they couldn't tolerate it. There were some things that he was just giving the ball away and really wasn't under that kind of pressure. First down, Colorado State for 33 10-50, left in the opening half. Great protection for Anthony Hill. He's got a man wide open. It's Eric Olson. Down to the 23. Give him that much time. Yeah, you know, I'm you got to get pressure on him, and then you got to do it in a controlled fashion, which makes it so difficult to defend this guy. You know, he dropped back pretty basic. He's looking downfield. He had triple wide receivers, three to his side. They're running a crossing route. Good receivers come back to the football. They create opening for the quarterback. That was excellent by Olsen. Nice throw on the move, throwing it against the grain. Oh, yeah. So you like that as a quarterback. Get the jog down and say, okay, feeling good. Eric Olson, the starting wide receiver, along with Matt Phillips, as Sonny Lubick told us yesterday, two good possession receivers. The play fake for Hill. And a good job just to throw the ball away with plenty of heat coming on. In fact, he took a shot at the end of the play, getting in Joe Cummings, the left end. Yeah, Chuck Polson ate him up on that. He ate up Jason Skull. That was a read. They tried to get the tight end across the drag, but, but Polson, the strong safety, would have none of that at all. You watch that late hit. So you do want to get a hat on the quarterback as often as possible. That's borderline. That's borderline late. You do want to do that as a defensive lineman. Every little tattoo you put on him takes his game off just a bit. Hill is missing one of the targets. He thought he'd be throwing to all year Paul Turner. He's been out the last few weeks. Could come back next week. He is their true home run threat. Oh, he's big time. As player. Phillips and Olsen are the two that are good possession receivers. Second and ten now on the delay. It's Cohen. Breaking tackles all the way to the 15. He got eight. Holanda, the outside linebacker, in on that hit. Karn, a junior from Oxnard, California. Yeah, you just set up the draw. Again, the offensive lineman, you got to play this off. you got to be somewhat of an actor. Then you got to throw you guys to the outside. Pretty good job there by Rogowski. They're expecting some big things out of number 77, who's in for Brandon Evans, who had knee surgery. They were really disappointed to lose him, but Rogowski's the man. Third and two at the 15. Drive started back to Colorado State 22. It's Karn again on the delay. And he will not pick up the first down. Stop shy of the 14. So now an early decision for Sonny Lubick on fourth and short. Is he going to bring his special teams out for the field goal try? Well, yes. Big risk, Joe. And it's going to be the young man who won the job in the kickoff during the week. Didn't look all that good on the extra point try that barely curled the crossbar. Matt McDougal. This is going to be his first career field goal attempt. Well, I guess you want to find out, Joe. You do want to find out now rather than the fourth quarter. It'll be a 32-yard try out of the hole of the backup quarterback, Eric Brown. And it looked like it was deflected. Wyoming got a piece of it. That's the reason Napier lost his job, the low trajectory on his field goal attempt. So the problems continue on the special teams for Lubick and the Rams. Tonight, our Sega Sports student-athletes in the game for the University of Wyoming, Ryan Christofferson, a second-team GTE Cosida academic All-American last year. 
looking at for Colorado State University. Greg Myers, free safety, a two-time WAC Academic All-Conference Award winner on track once again to win that award for the third time. Well, McDougal had his problems on the extra point. He had the field goal drive, 32 yards blocked. And Napier waiting in the wings, who has been their place kicker all year long. If he didn't have confidence prior to this, then he might be a shambles now. And I still believe sooner or later he's going to have to go back to him. Wyoming getting it now for the fourth time of the first half. Tied at 7. 9-19. Left of the first 30 minutes of play. And again, good blocking for Christofferson to get 9 on first down. We look back now at the blocked field goal attempt. The 81 got up there. It's like John Burrow got yes. up. Yeah. The senior from Pinedale, Wyoming. But it helps a lot when you have that low trajectory. That's why you like the, the good kickers. They can get elevation real quick and get it right off the foot. Third New York. Christofferson belt him in the backfield. He's tough to bring down. He still gets back to the original line. It looked like he was going to lose about two. It's like Ragsdale had him. But what do you grab? I mean, there's nothing small on this guy's body. How do you get to him? You know, his legs and arms, he's constantly moving and churning upfield. And he really looks good with Saad. Yeah, well, Wyoming has a good look with Saad. A couple of their players have been in the turf. What a start, a five-yard average, 66 yards so far. Awesome. Already, over the first nine games this year, 1,000 yards. Doesn't look like a guy that's banged up, beat up, does he, Joe? Three or four in the third down try so far. This is third New York. Christofferson's got it again. Takes an army to bring him down. So first down Wyoming. Close to the 35-yard line of the NFL returns to ESPN tomorrow night. What a great matchup. Oh Montana and the Chiefs at home at Arrowhead against the Raiders. And one of the leading receivers right now. Fifth best in the AFC and catches Tim Brown with 44 grabs. And those are two teams that it's always entertaining. As we look at the AFC West standings, Kansas City two games beyond the first place San Diego Chargers. The Raiders have taken three out of the last four now, getting back into the thick of things. But the Raiders have not been able to win in Kansas City since 1988. First and 10, Wyoming. Flag on the play as he goes for the bundle. And just barely overthrows Tillman. Inside the 25. Looks like an offside call coming up. So a free five. It'll be first and five now coming up. Let's head downstairs to Mike Mayock. Mike? Hey, Joel, let's reset this kicking situation. Okay, well, they've had problem all year. David Napier's had five kicks, kicks blocked this year, and the biggest problem was trajectory. So what do they do? They load a punter, Matt McDougal. He's having the same problem tonight. Then they move a free safety in the kickoff, and on the opening kickoff, he pops his quad. So the kicking situation has been horrible for these guys, and like, uh, like Doc said, I think sooner or later, they're going to have to go back to Napier. First and five now, outside of the 40. Napier did not exactly look like a happy camper as we saw him on the sideline. Did. Yeah, they come close to the first down on the run by Hendricks, and we check in once again with Mike Tirico. And Joel, just a reminder, George Foreman winning the heavyweight championship with a knockout of Michael Moore at 203 of round 10, becoming the oldest heavyweight champion by eight years and five months. Jersey Joe Walcott was 37 years old when he won the title in 51. We'll take it out to Charlie Steiner, Al Bernstein, and Mark Schwartz for post-fight coverage at halftime. Joel. All right, Mike, we look forward to that. You have to give more credit for giving Big George that opportunity to fight for the title. Yeah, he showed some guts. He really did. And just to stick in and try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy with lumberjack arms. Inside of seven minutes to play in the first half, it is tied here at seven at Fort Collins. Moving to the right side. And the tight end's got it. He's got more than enough for the first down on second and short as it was taken in by Jeremy Gilstrap, but it looked like procedure on the right side of the offensive line. Boy, the Rams are jumping. It looks like uh, Colorado State trying to stunt, trying to blitz. Got caught now twice. They're going to say the left end, Sean Moran, forced the situation. Yeah, you can watch it. Watch top of the screen as you'll see. 
what they're trying to do is just anticipate the snap count, try to get the edge. And that time, Moran, once again, got caught. Well, Ryan Folsom, the other tight end on that side, number 48, lifted up a little bit early. Uh, tight ends never do things like that. It had to be the defensive guy. So they will decline that penalty as they take it all the way down to the 46 on the reception by Gilstrap. You didn't hear the news earlier today on the Western Athletic Conference. New Mexico shocked Utah, winning it on a late field goal. So now a three-way tie for the top spot between Utah, BYU, and Colorado State. All three in conference play at 5-1. And, and Sonny Lubick really has to be concerned with the way Wyoming has been moving the ball in the first half against his team that has been resting for the last couple of weeks. And he gave his team off a couple of days. He said he didn't know if he did the right thing, but he wanted them to forget about the game. That loss to Utah here at home. First down, Wyoming is Gustin. Audible ices at the line. It's Christofferson. And a late flag coming from the referee, Jack Clark. Or Jack Carter, rather, after a gain of about five. Offensive line called for a hold for the first time tonight. Well, top crowds at Hughes Stadium, Utah, a couple of weeks ago, 39 107. Tonight, the third largest, 35 5 14. Fire Marshal was out of town, I might add, on October 22nd. <laughs> yeah. So you can stack people on the end zone and all the grass field. And people can bring a sack lunch in a good old fashioned time. There are only two ways in to this ballpark, and it was fun getting here early and watching all the headlights stream in. Yeah, it looked good. Feel the dreams. Build it, they will go. They're here, but they want to win. It's a mark off back to the 45 of Wyoming. First and 20. And Gustin, he looks like he needs a time out. He's going to go with it anyway. He had his man. It went right off the fingertips of Richard Peace, the wide receiver. Other scores late in the third. Arizona jumped out to that early lead on Cal. Gustin now four of eight for 30 yards. What he has been very effective at is Adlib moving out of the pocket, picking yep. up valuable yardage. Done a great job. He has been intercepted once. He's run it three times for 26 yards. Second and 20 now. The screen is batted back. What a play defensively. Brady Smith, who leads the team with nine sacks, a junior from Barrington, Illinois, getting up top and in the face of the quarterback. Boy, he's provided great pressure, not only all night, but all year. Devon Hawkins, 74, they're also very high. And watch those eyes. So he's looking. A lot of quarterbacks give things away. He played that pretty well, pretty well. But when you get a good defensive end, it gets upfield, gets pressure, gets those hands up, good things happen. Well, that turns out to be, so far at least, a huge holding call. Smith bats it down. Now, Wyoming looking at third and 20. Well, they are 4 5 so far on their third down. They're out of the rhythm. Gustin has his man, but he's going to be well short the first down. That's Marcus Harris taking it in. So, punt coming up after the nine yard reception. Kareem Ingram over there. Putting down the wide receiver. Ooh, a couple of first downs. It looked like they were going to pick up the third on the Christofferson run. The holding call forces the punt. It hurt him. They also got in the floor. They stopped pounding the football. Got a little cute. And to punt it away now is Brian Gregert. Ronald Antoine will take it inside the 10. He's got it across the 15, out to the 17. An eight-yard return for Antoine, so the Rams have it back deep in their own territory when we come back to Fort Collins.
an intense rivalry is Laramie. He's only about an hour drive from Ford Collins. The Rams and Cowboys getting together tonight at Hughes Stadium. You look what happened last year. A huge upset with Colorado State winning that game by 20. When Wyoming, if they do pick up the victory, they're an outright winner of the WAC title and go to the Holiday Bowl instead of trip to the Copper Bowl. Other recent border war upsets, so you can see. Wyoming has owned the series recently, taking five of the last seven. But Colorado State definitely got the revenge last year, and now Wyoming's trying to turn the table. That still hurts. You look back over the 20-year period, the underdog has come in about 60% of the time and been victorious. Van Ward is the single set on first and ten now back to Colorado State, 17. Ward weaving his way, good yardage on first down, all the way to the 23 for six. It started back in 1899, this matchup between these two schools, the oldest rivalry for Colorado State. They lead it now by eight, but Wyoming has taken 25 of the last 38. When I asked the head coach, Joe Tiller, yesterday about last year's game, he's talked about it much this week and getting ready. He said, you know, it's such a bad memory for my team, I haven't even mentioned it. Yep. Sometimes you try to block those things out, but the media will let you know about it. Second and short, second and four. Hill looking for the bundle. He's got Olsen. What a grab by Olsen. He's down inside the 30, near the 26. Well, that's fantastic. You know, what, what gets this play off the ball is the play fake. You know, when you really convince a defense that you can run the football and you get a quarterback that has very good motion to kind of hide the ball, tucks it, then you get good results. It allows your wide receiver to come down. See, there's the hint. When you get the DP turn, then you accelerate upfield. The ball is picture perfect. Boy, it doesn't get any better than that. It makes offensive coaches tickle to death. Oh, yeah. Say, I, I did that. So first and 10 now as they place it just inside the 28. Two catches, 92 yards now for Eric Olson. And a timeout needed for Anthony Hill, the senior quarterback out of San Diego. They'll be right back to Colorado State as the Rams are rolling once again. The very first play of the game, Anthony Hill, the quarterback for Colorado State went for the home run ball and he stayed with that big play offensive plan he's had three big plays already two receptions of 44 and one of 48 yards that's what sets it up and they were very close to completing the open but what it did is set it up so when he gave him the hint go to the post he got wide open now the rams have it inside the 28 of the cowboys first and 10 tied at seven inside of four minutes left in the half they're looking again for olsen and batted away and almost intercepted is it picked off no Steve Hendricks with almost an incredible interception. Gotta be confident though if you're a defensive back. You gotta run off that field like you caught it. You gotta sell it. He's the senior from Phoenix, a transfer from Phoenix Junior College. Then you big a little bit. <laughs> and it's a good, good, play. good call, ref. Good call. As you watch this, the offensive line was brilliant. They give him excellent protection. The vision is there. Nice throw. Operation is there. The ball's a little behind him. You know, Olsen had the tired legs. I think he could have got up for that. And then the ball kind of rubs on that. That's iffy. That's iffy. The dead legs cost him, Joe. He couldn't get up. Anthony Hill referees as well. Oh, yeah. Everybody's a ref now at this point. Now are they committing to the pass? You would think as Hill was working out of the shotgun. The shovel pitch. It's the eighth back. Burkett, he breaks the tackle and he gets the first down all the way to the 15. 13 yards in the run by Burkett. You remember on the reverse, after the draw on the give of the reverse, Burkett had a 40 plus yard run. Monster run. James Craig, 69, gets a block. I mean, this is a play they've had a lot of success with. You have to sell it as an offensive lineman. Then you watch Craig, he gets that chip on 94. Then you need a back to get around the corner. They just weren't in position. Well, that's nice effort. Very nice effort. Hill is now four of seven. That's a completed pass for 109 yards. Burkett, I might add, is still looking for his first career touchdown. He's the senior from Lakewood. It's gone on first and ten. And he loses it. Wyoming has the ball. The Cowboys take it away from Renard Card. Turnovers even now at one apiece. 
and they get it back when it looked like the Rams were ready to take the lead as John Burrow makes the fumble recovery. Well, Carnes is in. Brown is out. Watson is out for Colorado State, so he's got to get the job done. He got a pretty good mesh there. He's fighting for yards. He's tucking the ball. See the helmet. Put a Rydell helmet right on the football. So you defensively, you set a guy up. You want those top-off guys to come in and somebody aim at the helmet. That's good defense. Let's go back downstairs to Mike Mayock. Mike? I just had a chance to listen to the offensive coordinator. Here's what Wyoming's going to try and do. Watch number 23, Marcus Harris, on this series. Underneath routes, they got to get him the football. It is Christofferson. Maybe a yard. From near the 18 to the 19, Kareem Ingram, the first one over there on the stop. Boy, that's neat. Mayock, get, you know, you get next to that bench, you start hearing those coordinators talk. That's the best stuff. It really is. That's good work, Mike. We'll keep our eye on, him, on Marcus Harris. They want to get him the football. There as you watch inside. And you see the huddles. So this is the point where coaches do a great job of trying to keep you encouraged so you don't get your confidence down. Coordinator Scott Downing on that, trying to tell these guys to hang in there. And we just received word from Mike and Greg Meyer starting free safety. Pop the quad. He is out for the game now. As Christopherson is out of bounds for the short game of the 21. It is going to bring up third and long. Davis and Stanifer out of the secondary, forcing him out of the near side. And Stanifer's active. There we see Greg Myers, who is out, an excellent football player. Tried to get him in on the kickoffs, and he pops the quad. But Steve Stanifer is filled in. He's very active. He's good on special teams. Has a real nose for the football. More like a strong safety than a free safety. He's aggressive. Chris Dobberson, as you can see the breakdown of the run so far. Real balance there. Eight to one side, eight to the other side. That's why I'm in offense 12th in the nation coming in in total offense, averaging 450 yards a game. Third and long, dust to the wide side of the field. And Tillman won't get to the first down marker. Ray Jackson with a sure hand attack out of the open field. Well, there aren't a lot of quarterbacks that can make that throw, Joel. I mean, it's a gutsy gutsy decision to make that kind of throw on the wide side. He runs a stop pattern. You like him to come back to the football. He does that. But you got to be in a position to go forward. He's standing up, maybe lost his footing. It's good defense. And a real heads-up play in front of their own bench. Colorado State has stopped the clock yep. before a punt coming up when we return for the Cowboys of Wyoming. Welcome back once again to Fort Collins. Gregor ready to pump the ball away inside his own 20. He gets into this one end over ender, though. And it takes a cowboy hop as Antoine is belted. Back inside his own 25. The man down there, Brian Lee, the reserve defensive back, a freshman from Arvada. will place it back near the 21-yard line. So good special teams coverage. Now the last two times Colorado State has had the ball, a missed 32-yard field goal try as it was blocked by Burrow. And then Burrow again in on the play. He recovers the fumble on the last series as they took it away inside the Colorado or inside the Wyoming 20-yard line. Yeah, State's got to get a score. Their field goal operation is not good, so they're going to have to really go for the end zone. 229 left in the half. It's tied at 7. They're on Ward out of the backfield. to call his own number. Not much there, though. Only three on the carry. Don't forget, coming up, the GMAC halftime report. A focus on the WAC, a packed in update as well. And the big story tonight, George Foreman going up against Michael Moore for the heavyweight championship of the world. Do stick around. As Mike Tirico is going to be joined by Charlie Steiner and Al Bernstein at the site in Las Vegas. And that is a remarkable story. You'll want to stick around. Inside of two minutes to play with the clock moving. Only one timeout remaining now for the Rams of Colorado State. They're looking at third and a long seven. Or make it second and a long seven. Good pressure on Hill. He loses it, but he's already down to 25. And you got a block from the official, I think, a little bit. Brent Lou wrapping up a very elusive quarterback, Anthony Hill. That's what he does best. What Joe Cummins, I love this guy. Watching 47 left of your screen. This guy gets good pressure, keeps the outside arm free. See, he pinches the pocket. He squeezes it in, but he's going up against Anthony Hill, who's a miraculous guy who can pretty much work his way out of a... Any kind of gym, 
has really at least I'm impressed. So now third and five from the 25. Clock still moving exactly a minute to play. Get only needs five. He's got Olsen, and Olsen hangs on but loses it on his way down. Big shot from behind by Greg Van Leer, the cornerback. Boy, Greg brought the mallet on that one. That's a scary throw. I, I think that's an ill-advised throw. I mean, you're throwing that ball across the field. I mean, he does not have the cannon that Gustin does. He gets it there. You need to hold on to that. I mean, that's 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 the ball could and should be caught. Now McDougal will punt it away. Don't forget, he had a punt blocked in the last game against Utah. Only one so far tonight. That traveled 38 yards. As Eddie Pratt is waiting back at the Cowboy 35. Pressure on the punter. He gets it away, though, and sets out a beauty. Hangs it up. Pratt from the 29. And he's down in the 36 with a flag coming out at the point of the tackle. 45-yard punt. A tough six-yard return by Eddie Pratt. Now let's find out. Referee Jack Baker. Is it an illegal block or face mask at the end of the tackle? Don't forget Wyoming has all three of their timeouts remaining and still 41 seconds left in the half. That's tough. Olsen's had a good game so far for State, but this could really hurt him. Man. His drop sets up a kick. There you see the face guard. Unintentional, but you know, it still counts against you. He's sure. thinking right now, Joe. He's thinking about I got to get in halftime, keep some of this momentum going. I don't like the feeling now. The crowds out of the game, that's not good. Especially when you're at home, you want to keep your people cranked up. Talking about this Wyoming offense, they've been held in check in the passing department so far. The Starbucks have had a good start tonight on the ground. They're 12th in the nation. They're also 12th in the country in passing yardage. Let's see if they pick up some now. It was available for Ray Jackson for his second interception of the night in his sixth this year. Boy, it's tough. You're throwing the long out. I mean, I, I will say this about Gus. He has the gun. He can get it out, but you can't hesitate. See, he's late on that. You got to get back, launch, and get it off. Now, after a play like that, are they going to become a little bit timid about things? The Cowboys of Wyoming. I still think you set up the hitch and go. At some point, you're going to see that. Trips to the far side, the wide side of the field on second and ten from the 41. The hitch and go it is. Marcus Harris has to go off his hands. Not as deep as I think you would have liked it. No, no, but it's a natural progression. You you hope if you do things like that that you can kind of bring the safeties in or the corners and you can take advantage of for a big one. So now Wyoming looking at third and ten. Wyoming. Scored on their second drive of the game, a 73-yard drive, most of it on the ground. Colorado State also scored on their second possession of the contest. Yeah. Very quiet offensively since, but it's been mistakes by Colorado State, or they would have the lead. Look for the corner route on this one, Joe. This is a good opportunity to try to get both of your receivers down to the flag. Justin out of the shotgun this time with good protection. He's got a man available. It's a first down inside the 45 to Marcus Harris, who's second in the nation to receiving yards per game. He averages 119 a contest. That was good for 15. Now, they've got 25 seconds left and all three timeouts. You might consider spending one of those timeouts as opposed to letting the referee wind it. But that's what they're going to do. I still think you want to try to get one upfield about 25 yards and run to a flag. As it's incomplete. Huge hit by Andre Strode. Oh, boy. Strode's only 5'8", 167, but it had to feel like a dump truck hit you. Feel for Kelly Garrett right now. He was on the receiving end. Boy, that is vicious. These are the great moments in football. You spin around and, oh, my goodness. Rydell right under the chin. He struts away. I don't care how what your size is. Right there, he feels like King Kong. Like he's about 6'7", 305. Up here, Joe. That's like 
<laughs> That'll good stretching. Oh, man. His defensive coordinator, even though he doesn't have a pick this year, Ray Jackson, the other side has five. His defensive coordinator told us yesterday he is their best cover man. I love it. Gustav to Harris. He's got a big one over to the 30. Down close to the 25, and they stop the clock. Stop it with seven seconds remaining. Now, you hate to end a half with timeouts on the board, especially when you're in the opponent's territory. They're useless. They're useless. And they it's lost about eight, room. nine seconds when they, they had did. 25 seconds left. Yeah. And they let the referee wind the clock. See, I like you take a shot at, as I mentioned, the corner route. At, you either throw the ball when your receiver gets it or you go out of bounds. This should never happen. This comes up, you got Davis, who's a young kid who's playing starting for the first time, comes up and makes a play on that. They win a bracket. They're trying to play an in and out. And you just don't give that up. That's why I like to see guys press a little bit. Get a knock on that outside receiver. Now, their plays kicker for Joe Tittle, the head coach of the Cowboys. He only took over a couple of games ago. Corey Weedle, a redshirt freshman from Park Hill High School in Kansas City. He is perfect, though, two of two. And one of the two was from 46 yards out. Yeah, he's got a leg. Got a leg. Do you take a chance now with seven seconds left on another snap? Or do you set up for the field goal right now? I like to run a lot of a lot of the quick out stuff, and I think you can get it off. And passing offense, 12th in the nation, 273 yards a game, only 78 so far. Good portion of that coming on this last drive. But Joe, you, you got to kick it with a leg to keep, get it up to 49. You, you take a shot at you don't want to squander an opportunity now to put points on the board. They're going to try to get one more snap off and hopefully have a second or two left. Justin finds his big end. Can he get on in time? He dives to the boundary with a second left on the clock. That is living dangerously. Wow. It is complete <laughs> to the he eighth out. back, Eddie Pratt. And it's going to be a field goal try on the final play of the half. Boy, Eddie Pratt, you know, the coaches mentioned they need a big game out of Eddie Pratt. He's in that position uh, playing the A-back form. They really need a lot more production. They talked about it all week, and uh, that's a pretty good indication that he's with them on that. You got a player down there. It is an injured Pratt. Wyoming Cowboy. It is Eddie Pratt. He tried to get off, but then he felt the jolt he took as he was diving towards the sideline. Junior college transfer from San Bernardino Valley Junior College in Southern California. Former quarterback there. At Fairfield High School, young man earned 10 letters. You got a lot of guys out here who played a multitude of sports, but he was, he was special. Fairfield, Alabama. Senior A back, running back motion man usually a receiver as they go with the one back offense both teams with the one back offense good to see him back up yeah look like he's feeling too swell but just to see him walking means a lot so they're setting up for it's what is going to be just about a 33 yard field goal attempt maybe 34 we'll see where they finally put it down Phil, that was a deep bruised look on his face Believe me. It's like I can't wait to get yeah, in the locker room and out of this 32-degree yeah. weather. It's different looks you can pick up. That was a deep bruised look. It'll be a 34-yard try. I'll have to bend it from right to left. It is a left-footed soccer-style kicker. Final ball to half. Does he get it inside? No. Yes, it's just inside. What a close he call. That one. He shaved that one, man. A very close call. It counts. Lubeck and the Rams down by three at the half at home. It is Wyoming 10, Colorado State 7. Well, let's head to the studio now and join Mike Tirico. Okay, Joel, so Wyoming in position to try to win the bronze boot in this great border war. Coming up on the Halftime Report, we'll get Corso and James' thoughts on the day in college football. Highlights from the WAC, all the scores from the pack, as well as some of the other top 25 scores. We'll also take you live to the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, where George Foreman is speaking to the world about being the oldest heavyweight champion ever. The analysis of that coming up at the half. The Cowboys lead by three. Welcome back once again to Fort Collins. Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock down to the sideline. A 10 to 7 lead for the Cowboys. As they took the lead in the final play of the first half. And this is it with one second to go. And a Weedle just barely gets it inside the upright. Credit good card. call by the official. Yeah, it was. Credit card kick. Good follow through. Watch the reaction. Oh, yeah. We're good. So that's
that's the way the first half came to a conclusion on a 34-yard field goal as you look at the first half numbers almost identical it really is and the rushing yardage is really the key now wyoming got off to a great start the difference in this is that for colorado state it was by the big play as a result of just pounding people so now the young man that closed out the first half is going to get the second half underway corey weedle left-footed soccer style kicker back deep van ward along with chris myers and it's not sports center it'll be taken by van ward good kickoff all the way back into the end zone with no momentum he brings it out what a mistake to the 10-yard line yeah the indecision cost him yeah, that's knuckle hit move you can't do that lost momentum is bad play this is kind of strange here when you, when you look at the numbers uh dustin ran the ball extremely well but he'll really competed had a couple of big plays one of the most surprising numbers of the entire first 30 minutes of play though only eight attempts for Anthony Hill quarterback that has made so much happen for this team with that record of seven and one now let's also remember this is only the second time this year that Hill and the Rams have trailed at the half the other time it was Utah they were down nine to seven it's now Colorado State with their starts with their worst field position of the entire night to start the second half and they get it to Ward for a gain of a couple out to the 12. Big Ty top. Hopkins, the big boy, getting in there. Ty's been pretty active, had a pretty good first half, along with Williams and Burrow, those guys, uh, Mark Brook and probably Joe Cummings was had to be the cowboy of the of the game, the first half rather. He played well. Now that win for New Mexico earlier today over Utah won't mean a thing to Colorado State if they cannot come from behind at home. Wide receiver set. Hill has a wide open man at the H back, and Burkett drops it. We we're just talking about that big upset for New Mexico, so a three way tie for the top spot in the wagon. The remaining games now for those three Utah, Colorado State, and BYU. Horse races, you look at Air Force, and everybody's scared to death of Air Force. You got to deal with that wishbone. They're playing real well. Uh, Fresno State at the end for Colorado State. And then San Diego State and Utah for BYU. So this is, this is what it's all about, man. A great, great uh, parody in the conference. And wouldn't it be ironic if Sonny Lubick had to go to Fresno State to win the WAC championship up against Jim Sweeney, who he played high school football for? Good, Good point. Uh, the shotgun hill on third and eight. He's in trouble. And the punt comes down out of bounds. So 55 seconds into the second half, Wyoming carries over the momentum they had late in the second quarter. Well, it's three and out to start the second half for Hill. It all starts with Van Ward's bad decision to take the kick out. He hesitated. He cost your club field position. Then you come out and you have a drop by Burkett, and then you punt and you've lost field position. Eddie Pratt waiting for the punt. He took a shot towards the end of the first half. Good to see him back in there. And now McDougal punting from his own end zone. Low-line drive, returnable time for Pratt from the 45. And Pratt goes down with great field position for Wyoming. Four-yard return after a 43-yard punt. They'll have it at the 49 when we come back, leading by three. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by Chrysler and the new Chrysler Cirrus Sports Sedan. It is a crystal clear night in the Rockies. It's cold, but it is beautiful. It's 32 degrees. Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock at a 10 to 7 lead for the Cowboys of Wyoming. They get it now for the first time in the second half, and they start with their best field position to start a drive for the entire contest. Interesting to see if they get back to the run. And Stomperson had 76 yards and 16 carries in the first half. The play fake. And Pratt takes another pop. Oh, it was Prentice Davis, the strong safety, who's getting the start ahead of Scott Lynch tonight. That hurt from here. Well, he stepped in red just real well. Sometimes you try to settle it. You drift it back. You don't catch the football. You hear it over and over. You might as well catch it because you're going to get the tattoo. Davis only a junior out of Waukegan, Illinois. Second and ten for the 49. 
Christofferson breaking tackles for the first down and end zone. He's all the way inside the 35 to the 34. Now let's head downstairs to the third member of our team, Mike Mayock. Mike. Thank you, Joel. I talked to a very frustrated Colorado State coach, Sonny Lubick, at halftime. Frustrated because, once again, performance of the special teams are killing them. I said, what do you got to get done offensively? He said, Mike, we were in the red zone twice. We had a fumble and another kick. I said, what are you going to do on the kicks? He said, we may go back to Napier. If not, we're going to go for it on fourth down. Well, turnovers might kill them in that Utah game. They gave it away five times. First and ten, not much there for Terry Hendricks. This gives Christofferson a little bit of a break. Christofferson already with 92 yards now and 17 carries. Hendricks, a senior from Arlington, Texas. We talk about Christofferson and Hendricks, two seniors, the two tailbacks they rotate, but this is a very youthful group of Wyoming Cowboys among the first 24 of their two deep chart. They have 20 players that are either true freshmen, redshirt freshmen, or sophomores. They can't wait until next year. I mean, those coaches are saying, we want to end this strong. We still like to beat the Rams. But look out for us next year. Donald second and close to 10. Hendricks won't go down. Diving very close to where he needed to go. Comes up short of the first down by a yard. And we go right back downstairs to Mike Mayock. Thanks, Joel. Wyoming defensive coordinator Scott Downing told me at halftime he loved the effort of his kids. They're flying all over. They're making great hits. The one concern they have is Colorado State's play-action pass game. That's what they stressed at halftime, and that's what you can see out here in the second half. They didn't have to worry about it too much because Anthony Hill in the first half only threw eight balls. Now, we did see a little bit of the play action in that first series of the second half. Yeah. Now, Wyoming just got to get back to running the football and controlling this game. Third New yard, Rick. Big play. Christofferson won't be denied. He's been their inside man tonight. He went outside that time to the 20-yard line, first and 10 Wyoming. So one of the problems is that when you script an offense, and this is what they try to do, they come out and have a pretty good idea of what they want to do. You watch the line of scrimmage again. See, I don't like him going out. Of, but he's not doing what he does best. He needs to turn it up and punish people. Much better running between the tackles. And the guys are loaded, 241 pounds, and that's what they list. That's not after those cheeseburgers and the stoop lounge and the whole bit. He's about 250. Low center of gravity. Reminds me of Nottingham. He's going to be a third time academic all whack performer once again this year. You gotta like that. Gustin looking for help with a flag on the play. He finds the tight end, Greg Coon. Former walk on out of Pueblo, Pueblo, Colorado. Is it offside coming up? They line up at the neutral zone, the Rams of Colorado State. Yes, 3 5 on first down. Third time. They have lined up offside tonight. Just inside lost. of 12 minutes left of the third. Lost some of their aggressiveness. I can sure if you watch Coach Lubbock there, he wants those guys to keep their edge going and don't get shy as you watch uh, you know, Mor Moran. We haven't talked about him. We haven't mentioned his name a lot. He's a very pivotal player to their success. He's got to get him to the floor of this deal. John Moran, the Wax Defensive Player of the Week after the win over Arizona. They beat the Wildcats in Tucson, 21 to 16. First two five, Christofferson. Tried to take a lateral, like you said before. It looked like he may have had a crease inside. Yeah, it didn't work. Almost no gain on the carry. He's a between the tackles kind of guy. He needs that body lean, that forward body lean. He's got to press, press between the guard and center gap, and that's when they're at their absolute best. I mean, they're just toying with the Rams at this point. Here's we watch it again. Motion always sets up because you bring a guy over tight end that can help you block. See, he's got the bubble. It's right there. You've got to take that thing right at Ragsdale. He can't stand up in the pressure. He's 218. You're 250. You attack him. They'll get Christofferson and even 100 now with a yard on that carry. The second and four at the 14. Offside again. A three down. Christofferson on the road, roll inside the five. It'll be first and goal. All the way down to the two-yard line. It looked like the right side of the defensive front was jumping into the neutral zone for Colorado State. Trying to blitz, you know, trying to make things happen. You get yourself out of position. If the offensive line would just hold its water, then you come right at him again. A good, strong north-south runner, and you get good production. It's like taking candy from a baby if they'll just stay between those tackles. Offside on the defense. Penalty is refused. First down. 
Again, we talked a lot about the inside the tackles and good forward lean. Watch the offensive line. They come out, Ragsdale, right in the middle of your screen, 97. You see, you just get a pad on him. He's completely out of it. That's not good enough. He's got to plug that thing up. He's got to stop it. Even if he doesn't make the tackle, Joe, he's got to force him to go. Two back set for the first time tonight. Three tight end alignment. First to go for the two and a Hendricks. With blockers, he's in. Touchdown, Wyoming. Ten unanswered points now, scoring the field goal in the final play of the first half. And now taking their opening drive of the second half and moving 51 yards for the score. The final three negotiated by Hendricks. Weedle in for the point after a drive. It's good. So Sonny Lubeck's Rams, a two-touchdown favorite coming to the contest, are trailing by ten with 10.42 left in the third. Definitely an upset so far with 10.42 left in the third. Wyoming with their biggest lead of the night, 17 to 7. Watch Greg Kuhn. These guys are coming down. This is the angle that they're trying to create so they can get a down block, get some flow going, get a good block back. He will bounce. Guard pulls in there. Guard's untouched. He gets in and scores. So all of that done on the ground. Traveling 51 yards on the first possession of the second half. Cowboys just trying to repay the Rams for what happened last year when the Cowboys could have gone to the Holiday Bowl, won the WAC title outright. But they were thumped at home, losing by 20, 41 to 21. Neil Laramie to Colorado State in the season finale as Weedle sends a line drive one back to the goal line. Van Ward will bring it up to the left side. Van Ward gets close to the 20 yard line, give him the 20. Second possession of the second half for the Rams. Now let's see if they let Anthony Hill try to create a little bit more on his own. Got to get back to your offense, though. You, you can't, as we look at that scoring drive, they just start to pound the ball, 310 on it, 51 yards, eight plays, but like the way they did it, inside the tackle. They tried to get outside a couple of times just to keep them honest, but it was physical, it was the offensive line, capturing the line of scrimmage, and good-looking football. Let's see if the senior from San Diego now, Anthony Hill, has already set a career best in passing yardage this year. Spark this offense off the play fake. He's got Burkett, who hangs it this time. And it's a first down out to the 35. Same. Give him 16 to the 36, first down. Same play he dropped last year. They're always there. The offense is there. You just got to stick to it. If you start creating new things now, you just really put yourself in bad shape. You settle down, just keep doing the things you've been working on. Now, Hill had over 70 yards running on nine carries against Utah, and I bring it up. He's only thrown 11 balls so far. Do you want to take the ball off the hands that can create the most for you, even if you can't get the pass going? Do you want to let him freelance a little bit more back there? At this point, you don't change. You've been too successful with it. I think now you just keep gearing on it. They just got to play within themselves. They're stopping themselves. They're not tackling well. First to 10, Colorado State. Going for all of it for Olsen. And Olsen became the defensive back, knocking it away from Greg Van Leer with a flag down to the play. It is going to be offensive interference. Oh, is that or an interception? Heads up play by Olsen. Yeah, you need that ball down the chimney, outside shoulder, out on the left arm to give your guy a shot. Of course, with Wyoming. They don't use the seats here very often. Hughes Stadium, Fort Collins. I don't know if that's just because it's cold or they're great fans. Oh, that's great fans, man. They're up. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. So as you watch this, you watch it towards the end. See, he's got no other choice. Now, he had to think that ball could be intercepted. If the ball's on the outside shoulder. He can continue to run. He's actually beat Van Leer. Runs a good route at this point. Just survival. So now first and 25. Back at the 20. With Hill out of the shotgun. And a good job to avoid a sack just to get rid of the ball. Pressuring him, Joe Cummings. Laying a little bit of a hit on him at the end of the play as well. 
Boy, Joe's had, had a well of a game. He has been everywhere. So what you can't also afford to happen right now if you're Anthony Hill is to let the troops see that you're a little frustrated. You hang in. You're not going to get it all at one time, but you still got enough time to just play within your offense. The numbers against Wyoming last year for Anthony Hill, 271 yards, three touchdown tosses, was not picked off in that game. Far cry from what we've seen so far tonight. 9.55 left in the third. Plenty of time, though. It's Colorado State is trailing at home by 10. Hill calls his own number. And only takes it out to the 24. But don't forget the conclusion of the contest tonight. One of our Visa players of the game. At the end of tonight's contest. So they take it up to the 24, and it's going to be third, just about 21. So Ty Hopkins has been busy. <laughs> he has been on. Here's a guy who's had a bad ankle. He's got a pinched nerve. He's only been about 50% all year long. But, you know, as the coaches let us know, they want this game. That's the, the benefit of the rivalry. And they're showing no ill effects of injury. it behind his intended target. He wanted Donovan Burks for the first time tonight, a young man from Los Angeles. Greg Van Leer on the coverage and another punt coming up from Colorado State. That was a different look and a different set completely. We finally saw Linus Brown, the junior from San Fernando, California, who flanked at the right side, so they effectively had four wide receivers in the pattern. Spandelier will go back and wait for the punt from McDougal. McDougal gets into this one. And it's Vandalier from the 25. A return across the 30. He gets almost nine of the return out to the 34. And we head back downstairs and check in with Mike Mayock. Hey, Joel, there's a lot of great traditions around the country, but this happens to be one of my favorites. It's called the Bronze Boot, and this was established in 1968 by ROTC detachments from both colleges. Now, what happened was a CSU grad named Jeff Romero actually wore it in Vietnam, and the reason why I think it's such a neat tradition is probably in our history, politically, the Vietnam War veteran has been the one that's most forgotten. Here's a chance both to honor a great tradition and our war vets. Thanks, Mike. Good. Good stuff. First and 10 between the 33 and 34 for Wyoming. They go trips to the wide side. Give it to Christofferson, who's looking to that side of the field. He gets a couple. Out to the 35-yard line where he's met by the quarterback, Ray Jackson. Wyoming, Wyoming actually does him a favor whenever they try to bounce it and, and run him outside. Because it allows, they got a fast flow defense and allows them to make up room. Well, they've not played well. It's just right in the box, just man on man. Really surprising, too, because these guys are real strong up front. They pride themselves on the down lineman. They just been getting whipped. Coaches always worry about what kind of response they're going to get from their team after a long layoff. Two weeks because of the bye after the first loss in exactly one year. Snap their 10 game winning streak. It's Christofferson. Talk about in the box. There you go. Success straight up the gut, past the 42 to the 43. It looks like he's short of the first down, about a foot or two. But see, at some point, Joel, you have to say, is it a layoff or is it just good blocking? You know, sometimes you just get whipped up front and you don't get to production. I, right now, Ragsdale has not had the kind of game I anticipated, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Carl Ballard come into the middle linebacker spot. You see, they run a little trap. You watch downfield. They've got white shirts. They've been where's green shirts? You see, they're late. They're not flowing well. You watch it right at the point of attack. That's a good football player there in Hodge. See, Hodge doesn't even know where the football is. you got two good players there, Smith and Hodge, and they don't even know where the ball's at. Taken out of the play completely as they're bringing to the chains for a measurement to find out whether or not they got enough of that first down. Eyeballing it, it looked like they came up just a little bit short by inches. Well, Joe, just a couple of that. Carrots are paying off, huh, pal? Always. <laughs> 7.40 left in the third. 10-point lead for Wyoming. Motivation was not a concern for Joe Tiller coming into this one. We've documented it. Mike was just talking about Brown's booth, the Porter War. You can see the play selection. They have been very effective on the ground since the second series of the entire contest. Yeah, 
Takes that clock away. Keep Anthony Hill on the sidelines. On third and inches, Christofferson's got the first down of the 45, and the drive is still alive for Wyoming. Well, we look ahead to the weekend kickoff show coming your way on Thursday night. It all begins our college football weekend on ESPN, presented by Russell Athletic. It starts at 7.30 Eastern with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James. They'll preview all the weekend games, and then I will be with Coach Mike Gottfried in Provo, Utah. Boy, talk about a great setting in the Wasatch Mountain Range. Beautiful. We'll be there Thursday night. The Cougars hosting the Aztecs of San Diego State. Hope you can join us right here on ESPN. First down, Hendricks this time. Stop for no gain. And you'd have to think the Cougars of BYU and Utah taking to this contest tonight on ESPN. Pulling big time for the Cowboys of oh, Wyoming. Yeah, yeah, that's the first time that we've seen all night. Just like the green wave of being able to get a lot of people to the ball. You watch the line of scrimmage now. See, they don't capture. They get a pretty good surge up front. But see, there's Rags. There he's coming up. And that's what's been lacking. You got to get your middle linebacker at the point of attack. That's a pretty good job. Second and 10 to the 45. There's that quick drop. And he's got a man wide open. It's Tillman. He's bumped out of bounds inside the 15 all the way down at the 13-yard line. First and 10, Wyoming. 32 yards on the running catch. He set it up in the second quarter when they went after the one pump, but they didn't take it deep. It's the thing they've been trying to work on. This is what happened. They pound you. They pound you up front. Then you get the good pump. Good foot action on that. Real nice throw. He hit it right in that dead zone, and now it's a sprint. Four catches for 51 yards now for Brent Tillman. Junior from Pueblo, Colorado. But quarterbacks just look so much better when they have a ground attack. I remember Brent's brother Cedric played for the Chicago Bears. Christofferson inside the 10. Flag down at the end of the play. Back near the original line of scrimmage. You see a holding call quite often. He got to the five. And it is going to be a hold against the Cowboys. It's the second one of the night. And at some point, Coach Curd and company, I, I look to see him get the five-man front. They're going to have to get Devon Hawkins in the game and try to change up things to force this. I mean, you can't give that kind of yardage up right up the gut. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. That is only the second penalty on the Cowboys. Both have been ten-yard calls on holding. The other one stalled to drive. Where they had picked up a couple of first downs, moved it into Colorado State territory, close to the 40, but holding call brought it back and they had to punt the ball away. Now, that wiped off a run all the way to the five. They'll be able to capitalize in a great field position once again. First and 20, back at the 23 with Dustin with a shotgun. Dustin calling his own number. He broke away from the defensive back. Originally got away from Prentice Davis before he's forced out of the 13 by Kenya Ragsdale. Good run again by the quarterback, Gustin. Well, they get into their cat formation, no backs. This is the second time they've done it. They were very successful against State. And watch Rags. He comes up, tries to get a strip. This is what's got to happen now. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. They need to create a turnover. So if they get 10 yards on the run by Gustin, who would have figured that Gustin would have all that yardage on the ground tonight. Five carries for 36 yards, especially after what his coach told us yesterday. Was he putting on a good poker face for us? Well, he must have got the rags deal, too, because he didn't anticipate that he would be running as much. Yeah, when he looks at the defense from Colorado State, figures he needs a timeout. That is the first use now by Wyoming. We'll come back second and 10 at the Rams' 13-yard line. Yeah, yeah. 25 left in the third. The four and five Cowboys of Wyoming trying to send shockwaves through the whack already. Ryan Lobos of New Mexico did it this morning earlier today. The drive, six plays, starting back at the road 33. They sent Bratton motion, Gustin on second and 10. He's got Harris to the five. Touchdown, Wyoming. What a play call. Hard to believe that your best receiver can get over. Good formation set. They, they accomplished that by formation. Good throw. And they just fall over now. It's just good offense. 
They run the man Pratt in motion to the near side, Rick, to create some diversion there, and it really paid off. You run a little delay. You know, Sonny's thinking, boys, we want to. We talked about this all week. We've gone over it in practice. But that's the difference about the game. It changes people. Wait a in for the extra point try, and everything going the Cowboys' way now. Last year, it was the Rams who beat the Cowboys in Laramie. And right now, the Cowboys and Fort Collins all over the Rams in their home field. And this is payback. Ragsdale now, who is out, the linebacker flanked out. What you don't see, three receivers to the side, a little delay route. I mean, it's just jailbreak. He goes right in. Then you see Deion Strutt. Everybody's doing that. That's unbelievable. Things go inside. Marcus Harris, second of the nation in receiving yards with 119 per game. He's got 62 so far tonight on five receptions. That score good for 13 yards. You talk about cliches and how in rivals, rivalries you throw records out of the window. Excellent indication of that. When these guys come out and why wouldn't State be pumped up? As you mentioned the open, Joe. Hey, they got a shot. Utah has lost a game. There's an outside shot at the Holly Bowl. Why wouldn't you be fired up? They don't seem to have any rhythm right now offensively. No, out of flow. The crowd is out. crowd is trying, I will say that. But they need a big play. They need to wake this house up. Across the way, they haven't, they haven't hit their seats in the second half, so the crowd has done yeah, their they're best. Trying. They're trying. Weedle gets into it. It's going to be Van Ward once again. Stay there, man. First and 10 to 20. That is going to match the best field position <laughs> that they've had to start a drive in the second half. They joined us a little bit late in the second half. Ward decided to bring one way out after he decided to bring it out after he'd lost all his momentum, backpedaled into the end zone, only got it to 10. You can go back all the way to the missed field goal for Colorado State, and that's when they really started to lose their momentum. Midway through the first half, that was a seven-play, 67-yard drive. Great play design of a touchdown strike to Marcus Harris. Is he ever wide open? So now a 17-point deficit for the Rams. It's Brown on his first carry of the night, wrapping it up as they tried to strip it after a gain of over six. Joe Cummings, what a night Joe Cummings is putting together, filling in for Brent Schieffer. But Cummings has seen plenty of time this year as you see the Wyoming road woes. Tell that to the Rams. They haven't won a game on the road. Injured Cowboy down across the way. Six on first down. You know, one thing about uh, Leonis Brown, good to see him in the game. And you know, we talked to Mike Mayock before the game. He said he may not play. He wants this one. So this is when you got to get your troops in. Any able, able body that can play, you strap it up and get out. The free safety to leave on the injured Cowboy. They are not very deep in the secondary. Vaughn is out for from Cheyenne. You now, while they tend to the injured Cowboy, we will send it downstairs to Mike Mayock. Mike? Thank you, Joel. I wanted to talk directly to Rick. And, Rick, you did a nice job on that touchdown pass. What happened? I'm on the Colorado State sidelines. They got spread out vertically in the red zone, mm -hmm. forcing a man-to-man -man situation. And there was a ton of confusion among the safeties. And nobody picked up Marcus Harris. Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, one thing about it, Mike, is that with Prentice Davis in his first start, Greg Myers, a great safety who's out and hasn't played since the kickoff, you know, in Stanfield, and these young guys now, communication is everything, as you know it, as an old defensive back, and apparently now, they're just having some follow-ups. Well, I didn't want to point the finger at Stanford, but that's a good point, because they had him on the sidelines, and they said, hey, that one's on you. you got to have a little more communications in that situation. And now, Mike, we're looking at the former defensive coordinator for the national championship teams for Miami in 89 and 91, the head coach for the Rams right now, Sonny Lubick. He wants to get involved with his defensive secondary. He's got to get involved at this point. Second and four outside of the 26. It's Ward diving close to the first down marker. Inside of five minutes left in the third. From the spot, it looks like he's got the first down. 
Michigan football team gets confident when you run the ball inside the tackles. When you can dominate people up front, you know, it just spreads out. It oozes the whole club with confidence because it's a physical game. And this is one thing I like to see that the Rams are doing now. They've got back to basics. Brown's in the game now. They're going to try to capture that line of scrimmage. Now they're running out of possessions. When you look at 435 and counting left in the third quarter. Every possession now with three or four left in the game barring turnovers. They need to start putting some points on the board, especially this time. First and ten for the 30. It's Van Ward for only about three. Oh, I think Sonny Lubick was right on target when he said we've got two quality receivers in Olsen and Phillips, but our home run threat is still hurt. Maybe back next week, Paul Turner. Yeah, that hurts. And right now, they don't have the true home run ball at wide receiver, but they need to get a quick score, a quick strike. Yeah, that's 23 catches out of their offense, but the good thing about running the football, although you may be wondering, well, why don't they go for a big one? Their defense needs some rest. They need a chance to sit down and try to work some things out. So it's twofold. Eventually, you can set up play action. Second and seven now for the 33. Hill on a short drop. That has been a problem throwing behind his men all night long. It's Olsen sliding down, and we also mentioned at the top of the telecast with the frozen field, and it was at 32 at kickoff, down to about 26 or 27 now. There's going to be some slipping and sliding. Yeah, it's a little tough. They need to get back to where every offense especially in the passing game you need one pass whether it's a hitch or a curl this your bread and butter that you can go back to again they don't apparently have that at this point Rams only two of seven of their third down tries this is a third and seven he'll work out of the shotgun running ward in motion here comes the blitz from the outside he'll barely gets it away as he's belted and the corner blitz on. Getting to the quarterback, Jay Jenkins was in there. Sophomore from Tucson. Boy, Jay's getting a good shot. This is what happens when I mean, the scoreboard's against you. You know, a good defense and coordinating the group, they're going to come after you. They're going to send corners, they're going to send safeties, and that's the end result. So now trailing by 17, McDougal will punt it away. Down, he's got to be loving this Joe. This is a coordinator's dream. Greg Van Leer back deep, and it's a fake, and the man's wide open for the first down. They've got it, and on his way inside the 35 for the rounds of Colorado State. Andre throw the defensive back. What a call, and did they desperately need it? 35 yards of the fake. Well, that is magnificent. Not a lot of good things to say about special teams when you look at this club. Boy, he sold it, too. That's the key. He sold it well. Boy, it seems like it takes forever to come to you when you're in those trick plays. Almost breaks it away. Good field position. Rams now with new life. Now watch it. you got to sell these things. Really, he just comes up and kind of does. Now, now you wait. And you think, well, okay, I got it. He didn't have a lot of time to sell it. No, he did. He really did. First and 10 all the way down to the 32 of Wyoming. Let's see if that turns on this offense. Hill looking for Olsen. It's ripped away with a flag down to the play deep in the secondary as it was taken away by Steve Hendricks, the defensive back. We had a little contact. That happened to be the first pass ever by the punter McDougal. He's one for one now. 35 yards on the pass. And it's interference against the offense, a push off. Second time we've seen it. That's a huge, huge blow. The Colorado State down by 17. It's a 15-yard mark off. Well, you talk about a momentum shifter. You don't see it too often, let you alone twice in twice. the game. Yeah, twice within a seven, eight-minute period. Center fans on the offense, 15-yard penalty, repeat first half. Penalties have killed Colorado State tonight. That's 50 yards in Markoffs on six calls. Lubick down by 17 inside of three minutes to play at home. That clock will, that's a factor now. They need seven, big time. That's compared to only two penalties against Wyoming. Now they've got three snaps and negotiate 25 yards. Here comes the pressure on Hill. 
signal in his bat, and it's poked away with a flag on the play as the man drove through Olsen. It's Hendricks. Steve is begging at this point. You can hear those pads click up here. <laughs> So you have enough cushion now as a defense that you can get a little aggressive. They're up to the line of scrimmage. There's nine guys up now. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Automatic first down. Watching towards the end. See, you start scrambling. He comes back. Yeah, he's, oh, he's tugging. He's tugging on that belt strap. But yeah. you can never admit it. You can never, ever admit it. you got to pop up and say, who, me? He had that left arm in there to poke it away, but that right arm was in oh, his yeah. back pocket. He's holding. He's holding. <laughs> Good little technique. Sometimes you get away with it. Third penalty and a costly one. Automatic first down. I agree with what Coach Downing is doing, though. I keep trying to pressure. One turnover now, and this could be over. First and ten for the 31. It's Van Ward he's breaking a tackle. Outside he goes. And Ward's down inside the 15 with a first down at the 13. 18 yards of the carry for the junior from Cleveland. Well, it wasn't easy. Devon Blockwood, Burke rather, we'll see a little later on down the road. You can't get big runs. You don't break them past seven or eight yards if you don't get your outside receivers blocking. Look at Craig on there. He gets a good block on that. Donnelly, Pat Myers, these guys are chipping away in the downfield. You got to have those little people at least getting in the way. That's a great effort. Ward following his left tackle and left guard. As Rick just mentioned, Myron Craig. First and 10 of the 13. Hill looking over to the near side. Olsen held up again. No flag this time against Greg Van Warren. Now it comes out late. Yeah, okay. Hey, opposed to the aggressive play. I don't think you give it up easily. You go and fight him for it. Another interference call. It'll be half the distance to the goal line this time. Came out late because the official appeared. He was trying to reach for the flag. Kept you on looking, looking. Get it. Looking. Get it. Got it in this pocket with that pocket. I wonder if they practice on that. You see the mirror they're trying to they're going to take it all the way down to the two-yard line. So it's going to be first and goal from there. They need a quick score, too. Now you start trying to fight off these minutes. 2-16 left of the third, 24 to 7. Wyoming on top. They came in a two-touchdown underdog. Single set is war. They spread the defense with three wide receivers. Ward trying to bounce it out. He's in. Touchdown, Colorado State. It was all set up, not by the pass interference calls. And granted, they got down to the two, yeah. but they were ready to punt the ball away. And it was a fake punt, 35 yards, and a first down all the way down to the 32 of Wyoming. Special teams set it up. Van Ward carried it in. Rogowski up front. Donnelly, those right, guy, right side of the offensive line, did a great job. The Rams are back. Huge extra point, trying to cut the deficit to 10. McDougal gets it up in time. So he's had problems with a low trajectory on his extra point and his field goal that was blocked. So a brand new ball game now. The Rams back within 10. Excellent. Again, look at the surge up front. Donnelly, young kid, comes in, you know, getting the first start, knowing now that Evans is out for the season. He accepts a challenge. Oh, that's a nice way to finish it. Good to see these offensive line. I mean, guys really competing. I like Wyoming's effort in this. That was just good execution up front by Colorado State. Hey, Joel, there you go. How many could you do, Joel, right now? Hey, uh, that's what I will be doing after the game. I need to. Now, they are playing hockey right now, so I'll use some hockey terminology, but wasn't that a bit of a chippy drive? A fake punt, two pass interference calls, and the Rams of Colorado State will definitely take it. They're all a fake punt. Stroke does a good job on this. He sold it at the line of scrimmage. That was very important. On all trick plays, man, that you don't panic. 
to be used with patience. Great call by Sonny. Louis, man, man, it took some guts. If he fails on that one, oh boy, it could have been ugly right here. David Napier, the experienced one, coming in for the kickoff. And he booms it away over to the far side. Will it get to the end zone? Yes, in and out of the end zone for a touchback. So now Wyoming first and 10 of their own 20-yard line. They have enjoyed great field position on their previous two possessions. Starting to their own 49, their own 33, and both resulted in touchdowns. Well, now's the time for Steve Hodge. Moran, as you watch the scoring drive, eight, plays 80 yards, 308 on it. Kind of reminds us of a Wyoming drive, doesn't it? I've heard a lot of people take shots at Dodger fans for leaving the game for a six or seventh inning. What is this? It, to me, this is the only game in town, isn't it? I understand it. I wonder where they're going. <laughs> That's the key. Where are they going? First and 10 at the 20. Gustin ready to go. Sending his tight end in motion. Christofferson met at the line. And he loses the ball. It's a fumble. Colorado State says they have it. And they do. Kareem Ingram with the recovery. It's time for somebody on that side of the ball to step up and make a play. And Wyoming went right back to basics as you look at the turnover ratio. And this is the, their bread and butter. They went right back to it. Smash mouth football. You see, there's a big difference. They don't have a lot of scrimmage on this one. And there's Brady Smith. He comes around, steps the ball is there. And see, so you got guys walking back to the Hunters offensive lineman. And there's those green shirts. See, that's the big difference now. Smith forces. Ingram recovers. First and 10 outside of the 20 for Colorado State. What a turnaround. Hill looking for it on first down. He goes Olsen. And it's knocked away this time by Hendricks. Hendricks wasn't ready to call it quits on that play, was he? No, no, he's booking. You got to have a lot of confidence if you play quarterback. I mean, you're always out on the island. Very next play, you can come back. He's strutting there. This is pretty good. And you watch Olsen, pretty good little push. Not enough hit. See, if you're going to take a guy in, you've got to sell him on something. You just can't run downfield and go in against a good corner. This is the first time all game that either team has started with a ball in enemy territory. It is second and ten for the 20, and he'll work with Warren to the backfield out of the shotgun. Hill, the quarterback draw. Maybe four at the most. So now a critical play coming up. Six carries, 28 yards for Anthony Hill. Let's see what they do and whether they'll go to the wide side of the field on third and six. I think Jeremy Burkett again, 22, is a guy we ought to keep our eyes on. He's been involved with really more of the big plays in this offense. A lot of it by design. Let's see. Colorado State, a dismal two of eight so far on their third down attempts tonight. He's got Burkett. Burkett to the five. Touchdown, Colorado State. right now they ought to eat their heart out this is a good football game these guys are competing they haven't given up they try to draw within three on the McDougal extra point try and they do oh boy, he's kicking like a pro now oh, he's got that ball up that was a good recovery on the snap the hole oh, that was nice now Burkett has been a big play player for this club and this is ice I mean you know you can see he sells it well it's a beautiful way to come out of your break a lot of guys come out of the break and they're not strong with it he sold it Good lean, comes out strong and scores. Watch Hill. Oh, yeah. That's the beauty of the guy. That's what all the work for. The five week, all the school being the loss over Utah. Now, this call. They're still leaving. I'm looking for backup lights. Yeah. As reverse lights. They should. They really should. Two scores in 62 seconds. Now, how quickly can those cars dump you turns? 24, 21, Wyoming. Boy, this is nice. 
pressure. Doesn't get any more exciting than this. Pretty good play fake. Freeze the linebackers in, but this is all one-on-one. -on -one. This was Jeremy Burkett at his absolute best. Napier is going to kick it away once again. Two scores in 62 seconds. It was 69 seconds left in the third quarter. Oh, what a game we have going to Fort Collins. Napier gets into it. Peace will take it from the three. And Peace almost off to the races. Barely spun around going down at the 29 on a 27-yard return. Redis Davis, the safety, making the stop. But ahead of steam. Kamikaze's long special team. Boy, it takes a manhood to run into that pile. Now, Gustin and the Cowboy offense shift the momentum. The play fake. Pressure. Gustin does it again. Took a negative, turned it into a positive. Great coverage downfield for the secondary of Colorado State, but he picks up seven, almost eight on that scramble. Well, they pull it off. Prentice Davis was in center field. Did an excellent job. You picked that up real nice. And see, that's what happens when they took some time on the sidelines. Sonny Lovett gets over there to get a chance to talk it out. Good results. There's Prentice Davis, the start tonight. In front of Scott Lynch, the strong safety. Now, second. Second in the short three, Christofferson banging his way close to where he needed to go, and he's got the first down at the 40-yard line. And that should be, well, to stop the clock, first down. Reset it could be the final play of the third quarter. What a wild first quarter. Two scores on the first two possessions of the second half for Wyoming. And as you saw, two quick ones. Colorado State. Special teams played a big part of it. third 15 minutes of play. We'll be right back to Fort Collins. We've got a good one going. It's getting late. Stay up with us. We'll be right back to the fourth 15 minutes. A steady flow of taillights has now seemed to turn into a mere trickle. As we welcome <laughs> you back to Fort Collins, Hughes Stadium, Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock, and a dandy going on right now. It looked like it was going to be a big night for Wyoming. They were up 24 to 7. But the Rams have roared right back. 14 unanswered points in 62 seconds. Capitalized on a turnover. Three-point contest to start the fourth quarter of play. Well, that was the best production of scoring in the third quarter for Wyoming. Christofferson running up the back of his own blocker. Gets four on first down. We head downstairs to Mike Mayock. Mike? Joining me is Freedom Bowl representative Norm Hanlon. And Norm, you must have some mixed emotions tonight. It's a heck of a ball game, but you're a CSU graduate. Well, I am. I'm a, a Colorado State alum, played here in 72. Um, we sure hope to see the Rams uh, succeed here tonight. But the WAC's been very exciting for us this year. Got a lot of good opportunities for our game. Now the Freedom Bowl gets the second place team in the WAC. Who would you guys like to have? Well, there's some good choices between BYU, uh, Utah and Colorado State. We'll take any of those. They're all great programs this year. Boy, that was political. Joel? Gustin in trouble, and Gustin is sacked. Spun down by Steve Hodge, the first-team all-whack performer last season. That was a name we mentioned. That was a name that had to step it up and make some plays. We've not called his name a lot. A lot of it was because he gets double-teamed, but that's, a, that's the way to step it up. You can always tell the seniors will, will come in, to the charge. Here's at the line of scrimmage. He gets a spin move. Actually blocked pretty well, but he keeps going. Second time they've been able to capture the quarterback of the Cowboys for a loss. So now, huge third down. The Rams defensive unit. They're down by three. It's third and eight. And Dustin has just used his second timeout. Only one timeout left for the Cowboys. Most critical third down, though, coming up for the Wyoming offense when we return. Vertible. A three-point lead for the Cowboys of Wyoming once it was 17. Brand new ball game, though. And how important is this game for Colorado State? Well, if you didn't hear earlier today, New Mexico shot 
Utah. They were 5-0 in conference play before losing in Albuquerque. So now, Colorado State in a three-way tie atop the WAC standing, along with BYU. Third and eight now for Wyoming. They've hit on their last four third downs in a row. They're 7 of 10 overall in the contest, and Gustin is throwing for it. He's got a man, and he's got a first down. Taken in by Marcus Harris, his favorite target all year long. Came in with 50 catches, number two in the nation in yards per game. He had the last touchdown reception. What a clutch catch there. That's his sixth grab for 73 yards. Yeah, kind of strange. You think if you don't get pressure on the quarterback, at least you're going to step back and get into a zone and go after their primary receiver. They don't do either, either one of them. He's got single over there. The safety didn't step up. Yeah, you'd expect to see a little bit more. If I'm going to gamble, I'm going to try to bracket a double end here. He's good. So it's a first down pass to the 47-yard line. Colorado State, just about two minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Gustin with heat, and Gustin goes down again. Mount Hawkins, baby, he's there. He is all over it. Gustin didn't have a chance to even set up in the pocket. It's a loss of 11. Well, that's the benefit when you get a chance to, to switch you guys off. We talked about the five-man line that eventually they would get to. The play fact does nothing for them. That's an absolute jailbreak. Everybody and his brother's in on that one. Like in there again, you watch just straight man on oh man. They can't block. He is the absolute best bull rusher. He's a guy that has great feel for it, big thighs. He just crushes people up front. That is a quick 275 pounder. A redshirt freshman from Quincy, Illinois. Third sack of the night. So now second and 21, all the way back to the Cowboys own 42. They run back motion. Gustin looking, and he's got Harris again. The identical play they scored on takes him down near the 46, so they got 11-12 back on it. How do you explain it? I mean, there's no there's no way if you draw it up that's supposed to work. You get a playmaker like Harris and a quarterback like Gus, who's really on his arm. I mean, you watch the walkout. See, if you see the backer walk on, that's Ingram. You, he takes it away. See, he kind of takes it away, but you can't. I mean, John played it well. You give him the pump, you stay with your guy. Seventh reception of the contest now for Harris. And another huge third down. This is third and ten. Eleven and a half minutes left. Oh, that's, that's one in football there. He has enough. Trips to the wide side of the field. Braddock in the motion, man. Gustin with heat. He's going to run for it. And he won't get there. Garrett Sand runs him out. said he runs like a tailback and he hits like a linebacker they like Garrett they like him a lot when you look at Wyoming coming into the game they're only 34 percent on third down that last graphic showed that they were really on fire he played it well he really did but I like John Gustin he showed me a lot of quarterback Joe he has really answered the critics and played a pretty good football game very solid game this evening now can the punter Gregor get it out of bounds inside the tent waiting back at the 10 for Colorado State. They're after it. Very high one. Antoine stays away from it, and it takes a Wyoming roll as it's down for the Cowboys. Back inside the 10 at the 8. Well, you didn't want to take a chance. Colorado State in a deep hole down by a 3 when we come home. Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock. Back in Fort Collins at a huge break while we were away. They said it hit one of the Cowboys at the 17. So instead of taking over at the 8 as the left guard, or is it the left tackle? Yes, Pat Meyer lifts up on that side. But a huge break just the same. Instead of the 8, they got it at the 17. Now they'll take it to the 12 on first and 15. <laughs> and we check in once again with Mike Mayock. Mike? Joel, three injury situations you need to be aware of for Wyoming defensively. Defensive tackle Ty Hopkins out with a neck burner. Middle linebacker Jim Talich, neck burner also out indefinitely. And they just got free safety leave on back in the ball game for the first time in this half. All right, Mike, so a banged up group. It's back at the 12 and it's first and 15. Long count by Hill. And they go with the reverse to Burkett. He's got blockers once again. 
Burkett gets the first down across the 27, near the 28. He's been the big playmaker tonight. Boy, if he just followed the blocks on that, he might still be running. If you watch this again, you see Myers come down. They give you that counter trade look, and it confuses the defense. You get the flow out. Burkett goes, now watch this outside. See, there's all the green shirts. He runs into the white shirts. If he gets outside the hugs, the outside, man, a Polowski, he might still be trying. Two carries for 60 yards for Burkett. He's a senior from Lakewood, Colorado. He runs a 10-5-100. And he's a 220 pounder. First and 10. Huge hole. And what a block. The wide receiver came over Donovan Burks and put a block out for Ward. That was textbook. Yeah, it was. Terrence Zeno also involved in that. That was a nice little Check hit. Check that nine instead yes, of eight. It was Zeno. Zeno, that's absolutely right. He comes in, watch him out the bottom of your screen. He comes in, that's an ear hole shot. Not high impact, but good results. So Ward gets it up past the 36 and oh. eight on that first down carry. Hey, you like those. You like those a lot. Now you see the Cowboys going after that football. Inside of 10 minutes and counting, left in the contest, a three-point deficit for the Rams. They were down by three at the break. Each team scoring two touchdowns in the third. Hill calling his own number. Doesn't get the blocks and takes a loss going out of bounds. This is going to bring up third and a lot longer than they needed. He gave up on that play early as Mark Brook. Mark played that well. Forced him out of bounds. And it's going to be a loss of at least two. Take it back to the 34. You know what the sun is thinking out, guys. Just don't beat ourselves. Now an interesting call coming up. Third and a long four, almost five. Closer to the 33 than 34. They've got to take it past the 38. He's got trips to the wide side of the field working out of the shotgun. And he runs Ward out of the backfield. Hill with time. He's got his man. It's complete for a first down. Who else? Well, it's not 22. It's 82 instead. Matt Phillips on his first grab of the night. He went down, thought it was Burkett possibly, but it was Phillips instead. He's a senior from Grand Junction, Colorado. Well, we talked about Paul Turner's absence. Someone would have to step it up, and that's nice. If you can do that on your first reception, man, that shows that you've got steel nerves. Phillips, a senior, missed all of last season with a knee injury. That is his 13th reception of the season. Still looking for his first touchdown grab of the year. First and 10. The play big for Hill. Buys him time, and he's got Burkett again out of the H-back position. He's got another first down. He's at the 33 of Wyoming. 22 yards for number 22 on the catch. Give Eric Olson and Ronald Antoine a lot of credit on that because they have a nice runoff. you got trips, three wide receivers to one side. You get those two outside guys burning down, and you can allow the inside receiver some room if he'll run a good route. Play fake doesn't hurt. You see it freezes the backers inside. Killing is hurt. And you just can't keep up with it. It's nice stiff arm. 131 yards in total offense for Burkett now. 71 on the receiving end and two carries for 60 yards. Hill's numbers up to 174 passing. Here's the counter. Good yardage on first down inside the 30. They stand him up near the 28, but still five on first down for Van Ward. Oh, that's nice. That is physical football. I love it. It's an attitude thing. You start getting in there. You can mix it up with the big guys. Ward has really answered the call. Brown out. Brown did show us a little play. E.J. Watson not playing in this game. Now, the last thing Colorado State needs is A, a tie, and B, to depend upon their special teams to kick a field goal to tie it up late. Now, they need seven. You want to win a championship, you've got to have players step it up and play way over their head. And I think we're starting to see some of that. Second and five, the 28 of Wyoming. Under eight and a half minutes left in the game. Hill with a good play fake. Going for it all. Looking for Olsen. Touchdown, Colorado State. a little earlier, Joe. Life in the corner's rough. 
Yeah, it was Wolf, great. They were selling Wolf tickets, you know, about 10 minutes ago. It is so tough, man. You need composure. It's good option. It's an excellent execution on this. Coach Downing thinking, what in the world is going on? Make Diggle for the extra point try. And a four-point lead for Colorado State is their first lead of the entire contest. And it comes with 8.18 left. Set it up with the old-fashioned way. Pounded people up the gut. It opens up play action. That offensive line doing an excellent job once again. Todd Peterson in at the guard spot. These guys holding their way. See, he's got time. He's got a lot of time. He throws this very nice. See, that's what we're talking about. Outside shoulder. Giving receiver a shot. Take it away from the defender. And now you watch the QB. Here's our end. He's strutting out. Look at the little duck walk. So you can do that when you throw touchdown pass. Hill was 3 of 3 on the drive for 61 yards. And started all the way back at the run 17 yard line. You tack on 5 more because they had a penalty before they really got the drive going. Well, the procedure goal. Third catch for Olsen. So it was an 83 yard drive. Gives him 120 yards of the receiving end now. He was a leading receiver coming into the contest. They burn Van Leer on the corner. That is 21 straight points now for Colorado State after they were down 24 to 7. There's a movement now. Richard Peace waiting back. What a, what a turnaround ever since the fake on the punt. I just had a thought. Maybe that was Wyoming people that were leaving early. Peace a yard deep in the end zone will bring it out. Beast with a flag down to the play goes down at the 27. He's good. I like him. Van Ward doing a good job on special teams. Will do the ground gainer tonight for Colorado State. They don't love Sonny here, do they? I like him a lot. <laughs> it may be tough to keep Sonny here. The illegal use of the hands. A block to the back, obviously. So now Wyoming starts in a hole. It'll come to the point of the foul and flags down at the 17-yard line. Joel, I don't believe you can win a championship if you can't come from behind. You have to have a game in which, you know, things don't look well for you, but you fight your way back. So now they place it down at the 9-yard line. The Wyoming coaches play hard and make a play. Time to help to put it in writing. first half four unbelievably tough penalties now with those two pass interference call four overall in the second half Garrett Sands blips up the middle Christopherson wide open up the middle he was available what a huge hold as they brought Garrett Sand the linebacker on the blitz that left it free straight up the gut 150 yards even now for Ryan Christopherson as you see Garrett he steps in there he's trying to create it but he runs right by him that's the risk you pay when you're going up against a good football team. They can run right at you. Worst field position to start a drive for Colorado back to their own nine, but they get out of that hole in a hurry. On that 21-yard run by Christopherson. Now it's Hendricks. Moment of indecision, but he still gets a little more than four. Anthony Hill. The all-new Colorado State total yardage leader surpassing the numbers put together by Kelly Stauffer the former quarterback here during the 84 85 and 86 seasons and yeah, those are great numbers but he wants to win I'm sure he'd like a championship in his senior year man that's all that counts is how many championships you get it is second and six clock moving seven minutes and ten seconds left in the contest a four-point lead for Colorado State and a fumble snap by Gustin Gustin get back on it. Yes, it'll bring up third and long. Also remind you, Gustin has used two timeouts already in the half. So only one timeout remaining for Wyoming. Still a full complement of three left for Colorado State. So now third and seven. That is a huge number on the scoreboard. The team trailing by four in the late stages. And he gave them up when he had the lead. That was the toughest part about it. You never do that when you're winning. Christofferson checks out. 
ghost trap. The tight end brings it in the play, and they go trips to the wide side of the field. The senior from Boise, Idaho, John Gustin, ready to go. And a flag coming out. Is it delay of game? Yes. That is the fifth penalty of the second half. They only had one the first 30 minutes of play. Dead ball. Delay of game on the offense. Pressure does strange things to me. That's exactly what happens. But in all fairness to John Gustin, that play did come in a little bit late for the sideline. The personnel as well. Could be the men on the sideline calling it. I mean, is everybody involved in this? We saw Christofferson get off very late, right? Total operation. Third and a dozen. Back at the 28. They wanted that play to Marcus Harris. Gustin on his way down, throws it away, and a flag comes out for grounding. There's no white shirts in that vicinity at all. Steve Hodge getting on top of the quarterback. And the Rams of Colorado State ready to get the ball back with the fourth sack for the Rams, the second for Hodge. Watch it again, pressure. Hodge, the guys up front, they're starting, starting to collapse the pressure, the pocket, rather. And then you see Moran, see, he stays with it. You never quit. You just never quit. Maybe you lose that extra at the end of it. So he gets that off. He's holding the ball in that, in that case a little too long, and he's trying to compete. Lost it down to mark off a penalty as well. Inside of six minutes to play. Rager running from back inside his own five-yard line. Now, they did try to get to it the last time he put it. That was the first time they went all out. They can go for the return on this. Right on that Great spot. field position. Waiting back at the 45. It appears they will set up for the return. And they do. As the only man they brought almost got to it. Antoine from the 43 makes the first man miss. Great field position for Colorado State. And a nifty little return by Antoine into Wyoming territory. So everything going the Rams' way now. They have made it back with 21 unanswered points, and they've got it back leading by four. Total turnaround by the Rams of Colorado State trying to stay in a share of the lead of the whack. They lead it 28 to 24. The one thing that turned it on around in the third possession of the second half, Colorado State down 24-7 at the time, and on fourth and seven, McDougal, the punter, went to the defensive back, the wide man in punt coverage, Andre Srode, picked up over 30 yards. Then, after they got it down to the 30, a couple of pass interference calls, took it down to the two, and that was the first touchdown of three straight scores and 21 unanswered points for Sonny Lubick's Rams. They've got it now at the 49, all the momentum on their side, leading 28 to 24. 543 left. Now let's see if they try to choose some clock. It's Hill on a beautiful play fake. Hill into the secondary. Hill inside the 20. And Hill slides down safe at the plate at the 13-yard line. What a play fake. Magician. That's all I can say about it. Boy, that is fantastic. See, he's been doing it all day long, and it just pays off. If you practice this way, and you come out, and you do it every single day, you'll get it for a big one. This is just great running ability. At this point, it's a jailbreak. Keep in mind, keep the clock going. Doesn't run out of bounds. Doesn't take a hit. Look, could be better. And congratulations to our cameraman for not being pulled oh, away. You got me. So often you see him gone. <laughs> It's at the 13, and it's a first and 10. Clock moving, 5.15 left. So much for eating some of the clock. Trips over to the near side of the field. And now confusion for Anthony Hill. Is he going to spend a timeout? Yes, he did before they took a five-yard penalty for delay of game. That is the first of the second half. And we will take a timeout as well. Hill rolling once again with the Rams offense, leading by four. Colorado State with the lead in the ball all the way down to the Wyoming 13-yard line. Joel Myers, Rick Walker, Mike Mayock back in Fort Collins on a chilly night, but a beautiful evening to the Rockies. Tonight's Visa players of the game for the University of Wyoming, Ryan Christofferson, 151 yards on his 27 carries and a touchdown. A huge factor, tackle to tackle tonight. 
And without a doubt for Colorado State, the big playmaker in each half, Jeremy Burkett. 60 rushing yards, five catches for 70 more. Touchdown reception. As part of the continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 as well to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these fine athletes. First and 10 at the 13, 503 remaining. It's Ward, and he is put down in a hurry. It looked like John Burrow, yes, on the far side, the right end. A loss of a couple. The one thing they want to do, though, is stay in bounds. Yeah, you want to do that. Uh, Bernard Carn had a fumble in the same situation, so you know that's in their mind now. You want to clutch the football if you're a running back of the Rams and still try to try to stick it in there, but do not turn over the football. The big playmakers tonight for Colorado State. Pass on the receiving end. Passes. Olsen caught a 44-yarder. 48-yarder for Olsen as well. Burkett with a 44-yard run. Then Hill with that 36-yard run. And it's back at the 15 where it's second and a dozen. And Hill looking to throw as a man. It's complete down to the five. He hasn't gone to show all night long, and show had five catches last year against Wyoming. Two went for scores. That was good for 11. I thought we'd see a little bit more from show. Decoy this year. And they got great success with see blocks down. You get a good play fake. Boy, this heel can fake the football. And you work yourself over here. I'm gonna drop that. They are short of the first down by a yard. So third and one at the four. Southmore tied in Colorado Springs. He had a big game against Arizona this year. He had a couple of touchdown receptions there. Oh, he's a good one. He really is. That was it a 21 to 16 win for Colorado State on the road. Now what a big fourth down, third down this is for the Cowboy defense. It's Ward up the middle. First and goal, Colorado State. Pat Meyer, James Craig. They're with Williams in the game, Peterson, Donnelly, Rogowski, an offensive line. It took them some time, but they started to put it together. Can I call the play here? Sure. Fake. Hill rolls over to the left and runs it in on his own. He can do anything he wants to do. <laughs> you know the quarterback draw? You know, I, I, I think it'd be really rewarding if you could pound it and give it to Ward. Ward, people off the ball. Ward has just departed, taking over his car. They've got two in the backfield, actually, now. Gilby Hill giving it to Carr. He's in. Touchdown, Colorado State. Boy, that's rewarding. Especially when you drop one. When you have a fumble, they, they have confidence in you. They come back, and you come up big. Steve Hodges in the fullback two-point. You know, he who plays deep in the tackle, comes over. That's, that's rewarding. It really is. Sonny Lubick's team was down midway through the third. 24-7 to when he gambled with that fake punt. Did it ever pay off and shift the entire momentum of this game? McDougal now for the extra point try out of the hold of Prom. So now it is a 10-point lead for Colorado State, making 11 to 35 to 24, and that is 28 unanswered points for the Rams. Oh, this is nice. I just love to see these big people run into people, and there he could be stopped. He could be stopped there. He just piled his way in. Very nice. Yeah, hey, Joe, you play a little bit of linebacker in this spot. See, you've got it confused. Got him confused. As a linebacker, you got to make a decision quick. You got to feel. Goal line is not the place to be going sideline to sideline. You got to plug it. This is a hearty group here in Fort Collins, especially across the way with most of those in the student body section. We saw a steady stream of cars leaving when the Rams were down 24 to 7. That side of the football field has never wavered and never moved. But well, we figured it out. Those are Cowboy fans. They figured they had it in the bag and they'd make the long drive home. Now you try to see that the Ram fans feel pretty secure. That is four straight scores of the last four possessions for Colorado State. Touchdown run by Ward as here comes the kickoff. They've got Richard Peace waiting once again. The RD will bring it out. Before he gets to the 15, did a good job simply to hang on to the ball. It was Brady Schneider, the reserve quarterback, 
on the hit. The last four possessions, as you see the turnaround in this game. And remember, in the third quarter, Wyoming had the first 14 points on the board to take a 24-7 lead. The last four possessions for Colorado State, a two-yard touchdown run by Ward, a 70, or make it a 16-yard touchdown pass to Burkett, 28-yard pass to Olsen, and then the two-yard run by Carr. Drives of 80, 20, 83, and 49 yards, and Gustin doesn't have any options here as he throws for Pratt the A-back and finds him at the 26 for a gain of eight. Clock against him, and only one timeout remaining. But Colorado State came in a two touchdown favorite. They're on top by 10 now. And the drop on a bullet to Marcus Harris. Don't forget, right after the contest, Kennedy Sports Center. Highlights, analysis, reports from Las Vegas of the big championship fight tonight between George Foreman and Michael Moore. Highlights from all the top 25 teams in action today. And the debut for the big dog, Glenn Robinson for the Milwaukee Bucks. Big dog with a lot of chow. Anthony Hill, the all-time total offensive yardage leader in Colorado State history. Gustin on third and three. He'll try to find a man, and it's short the intended target. He wanted Donovan McDowell, the freshman from Colorado Springs. Could have run for it as well, it appeared, on fourth and or make it third and three. Yeah, he had a shot at it. And no option. They've got to go for it down by 10. So they need almost three yards. The 26 need to take it near the 29. It's amazing, isn't it? The effect that emotion has. You know, when young people playing football. I mean, well, as you know as a former know, player, emotion or an attitude. One swing of events, man. And you just go from being indecisive to being Superman. Here it comes on fourth down, and it's batted down. Sean Moran got his hand up there. That'll do it. If there was any doubt before. Well, they pride themselves on defense. You know, it's been... Undertones when you're talking about in the whack, all you can do is score points. Well, the first team to play great defense is going to win this and win it for a long time. It's a pretty good indication there of a young man that really deserves everything he gets. Plays hard every single play. Hard to believe Colorado State, the way things have worked out in these fourth 15 minutes of play, hard to believe they were ever down by 17. And now they get it first and 10, trying to run things out at the 26 of Wyoming. Leaded by 11. Garn picks up about three. Brooke and Vaughn, the free safety, combining on that hit. So we took a look at that remaining schedule now. Out of conference next week with Arkansas State. The next game for Colorado State. Then they close it out on a Saturday night. The race and capital of the world where it is tough to win yep. in Fresno. Better believe it. Coach Sweeney's good. That would be good. Really should be. Just think about the whack every week, Joe. This exciting football. Second and eight. Will they run it again to Burkett? And it won't work this time. So he's dropped all the way back at the 37, there but he's stayed inbound. Yeah, so he goes the clock moving. Yeah, the remaining games just mentioned those left for Colorado State. Utah's at Air Force. That's a veteran group for the Air Force Academy this okay. year. Then a game with BYU. And that game is going to be at home for Utah. What has BYU got left? Well, we'll just mention that game. Plus the matchup with San Diego State. Aztecs. Their offense has been in gear recently. We're going to see that on ESPN on Thursday night with Mike Godfrey in Provo. And now, Wyoming has just stopped the clock for the final time. They've used the final time out with a minute 50 remaining in the game. That is the offensive coordinator, Dave Lay, in the middle there talking to Anthony Hill and go back to it's turning around when it was 24-7, third possession of the second half, McDougal the putter. 
First pass attempt of his career. It was a rope, wasn't it? It yeah, was a beautiful beauty. duck is what it was. <laughs> but it will make the CSU highlight film. And believe me, they'll stand up and applaud every time they see it. What a gun. <laughs> that was like you, huh? <laughs> no, I may be able to get it a little bit better. <laughs> Working with that Nerf football now. Yeah, I bet you are good with the kids. <laughs> The third and long, third and 20 after the loss of 12. Hill will keep it on his own and slide down to the 36, the original line of scrimmage. And now it'll take him down to close to a minute left in the game. As wild a game as you will ever see, it's rare when you see a team put 28 on you. He played his guts out. Matt Brook played at Rocky Mountain High School right here at Fort Collins, Colorado, so it's a homecoming of sort for that young man. Here comes the surge. I'll save for the post. Now, this is the bronze boot game, the border war. Laramie is only about 65, 70 miles away. Uh-oh. Got to keep away for the final 65 seconds. At least there's no grandstand or anything, you know, that area, pretty, free, pretty much a free area. But. Now, these end zones were filled for the Utah game, and they had 39,107 here for the contest. This is a classic little ballpark. It is a fun stadium. It is. Very nice. I'm sure that they have plans to fill it up and fill it in as they continue to win. Don't forget Sports Center. Right after the fans flood the field. Highlights. Reports from Las Vegas on the big championship fight tonight between lovable George Foreman and Michael Moore. Gary Miller and Craig Kilborn will bring you top 25 highlights as well. And the first highlights of what should be an exceptional NBA career for the big dog, Glenn Robinson, reporting for the Milwaukee Bucks. I love Mike Dunleavy's comments when he signed the day before and they asked Michael, is there a chance he'd play? He goes, yeah, it's close. In the opening. Yeah, but he kept him out of the opening game. Good. Here we go on fourth down. Hill calling his own number of the quarterback draw. And he'll give it back to the Cowboys at the 36 of Wyoming with 59 seconds left. I hope Mike Mayock's okay down there, man. That, that looks rough. You notice we haven't heard from Mike for some time. We haven't time. heard from Mayock. You know, he's on he's his okay. way to the Denver airport. He has a given. That's where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> Mayock's an old defensive back. I don't expect him to run out of this situation. He likes to put a hat on a hat, huh? It's first down at the 36. They've got to keep the people off the field as it's dropped by Pratt. That'll stop the clock with 53 seconds left. point advantage with Colorado State. He joined us a little bit late. It was all Wyoming to start the second half. But a wake-up call came after a fake punch. And then it's to the next play after Wyoming took over. A fumble by Christofferson. They turned that into a touchdown right away. So two touchdowns to get right back in it in 62 seconds for Colorado State. And all of a sudden they were only down by three. Gustin Throwing it right to the defensive back, Strode, who wasn't ready for it. It'll be third and ten. This young man had a pretty good football game, Joe. He won't be talked about as much because of the outcome, but he was really on. I mean, it, it was a time it was scary. Cowboys came in, and it's going to be a four-game losing streak now. And their coach, Tiller, was talking about what has developed over the last three. He said, the reason we've lost three in a row has not been the play of John Gustin. In fact, he has really put it back together for his senior season. Yeah. He had some problems midway through when he had to come off the bench. He was the backup for Jeremy Dombeck, a redshirt freshman out of Henry Andrew, Oklahoma. Gustin has performed admirably over the last three, and now four. As he goes deep downfield, and it's knocked away from Marcus Harris. That was Ray Jackson, who's already got one interception done. So they'll bring up fourth down. Security has done an exceptional job of keeping everybody off the field because they are surrounding the sidelines now. Well, you start taking these extra hits in the quarterback late in the game, and as a defensive lineman, man, that's your, 
Uh, that's what you go after. Although that was pretty mild. Came from Kurt Bowman. The left tackle, the sophomore from Glendora, California. I think as you look at this, and you know, Gustin got a late start, spent a couple years in the missionary, uh, had a shoulder problem early on. So he hasn't played a lot of football. I think he could have a future on Sundays, Joe. Gustin out of the shotgun. Will they be able to pick up the first down on fourth and ten? Yes. And the Cowboys will keep the ball. That'll stop the clock momentarily with 34 seconds left. The Mountain Spring Water is obviously getting to these fans here. What a comeback for Faluka. And now they're going after the goal post, unfortunately. 34 seconds. You know, why, why can't you wait and let this thing do it right? That's not classy. Really an unfortunate situation. Your team has come back valiantly, down by 17. They have been able to handle adversity. And well, you sit there for this long, and it was, it was 34 seconds. Hate to see it. And other fans on the near side who have not left their seats. You can hear the boos in the background. And these are other Colorado State fans. At least they're clearing out a little bit. It's youth and enthusiasm over age and experience. It's a big difference. What they don't realize is how big and how fast these 280, 290 pounders are. And if they're headed to the sideline where so many of these fans are, and they've never been on the sideline of a college or an NFL football game, they don't realize how they can really take hurt. a shot. You can get hurt. You can hear them shouting in the background, get off the field with the students. This is an unfortunate display because it's only the second night game in the history of Hughes Stadium. And this is always the result, isn't it? Injured students. The security. This is unfortunate, man. This is college football. This is supposed to be a lot of fun, especially for CSU. Dramatic come from behind victory. We've been here the last couple of days, and everybody was so excited that ESPN was doing their game. Oh, yeah. And then to have this over the final 60 seconds of play. Well, you know, it's like players and fans. You have to learn how to be good. You have to learn how to be a champion. You know, it takes some discipline. Well, we already saw what happened in Madison, Wisconsin. And that was, that was very, very unfortunate. So the next you got to put wire up. You know what I mean? You got to fence it in to, and you lose a good view. It's uh, it's unfortunate. I hate to put it this way, but the intelligent fans right now, their taillights are on their way out. Their team's already won. They don't want any part of this, and they're going to depart the premises. So well, we got a lot of people standing right here in the stands on the opposite side who are, are doing it right. They're right under us just watching the football. Either stay here or go home as planned. But stay in your seats. It's complete. Down to the 35. Unfortunately, went out of bounds. Marcus Harris with 20 seconds to go. And the next thing you don't want to see happen is that for the Wyoming kid, that they're able to get off the field. Sonny Lubick, I've got a feeling, is going to be addressing the student body. Yeah. In the and it will be nice. Days. It will be nice. He has a show on every week here in Fort Collins. Gustin throwing once again. Under 20 seconds left. Into the end zone he goes. And it's deflected by Davis with a strong safety into the back of a security guard with 11 seconds remaining. No way in the world this should occur. Security people are doing a heck of a job, though. Phenomenal job. Yeah, because there aren't that many. Team. They're, out, they're yeah. outnumbered so drastically. <laughs> 35 to 24. Let's not lose sight of what this means for Colorado State. Despite the dismal display of the student body. They will stay in a tie for the lead in the Western Athletic Conference along with BYU and Utah. And still a shot at San Diego's Holiday Bowl. Gustin on second down. 
Into the ground it goes with six seconds left. So one more snap. What a draw. What a draw, man. That's... <laughs> This is really detracting from what Sonny Lubeck and his program yeah. has done so well. Well, you always want to score, but you know. It's... So one more snap from the 36. And then we will send you to Gary Miller and Craig Kilborn standing by patiently waiting you to bring waiting to bring you all the highlights from George Foreman, Michael Moore. All the games in college football as well this afternoon and NBA highlights. Nice to see at least one pro sport is playing. The slant for Harris. Let it go. They stop it with two seconds to go, so one more snap. I don't understand. They're getting very close to taking down a goal post. And now both goal posts. It's a traditional rivalry, we remind you. Right now, Wyoming would have problems getting to the end zone. The security guard to the goal line as Gustin is back to throw. And it's complete inside the 20, and that's the end of the game. So Colorado State comes all the way back to win it by 11 in a strange final 60 seconds here in Fort Collins. That final score... The Rams 35, the Cowboys 24. Now stay tuned for Sports Center with Gary Miller and Craig Kilborn. As mentioned, the Moore story with George Foreman. That fight highlights and analysis, college football highlights, NBA highlights as well. Now for Rick Walker, Mike Mayock, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good night, Fort Collins, Colorado.